All right, so welcome back to Microscope. Hello, hello, everybody. Hello. Yeah, week two or week four of world building. It's getting a bit complicated to name these things now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so we're down Zeppelin. We have a Terran. Oh, yeah, Terran not a crippling with... migraine. Terran can go make up his uh, two his two uh, focus uh, his two focuses and 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 add in every bit for the other part because we have the uh, yeah, I should look at focuses those. at the bottom of the page. Where where did I put that history thing? Because there's stuff here I wanted to look at. Right. So what we're going to do is let Terran catch up. Is he gets two runs at being the focus? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And also, gets a, also you can add a bit for each, for each one of them because we have all the focus the previous focuses listed at the bottom. So yeah, I did notice you guys didn't do any events. Was it? I think scenes, scenes, scenes. We did no, we, no, we didn't. We didn't uh, scenes are probably going to take a little bit too long. And honestly, what kind of scenes are we be setting up? Is a question. You know, that's the whole per point of uh, this particular kind of game. Is what kind of scenes do you set up? Do you want to set a scene? I, I I'm strongly considering it. At least one. Yeah, if, if Terran has two focuses, then Discard has his second. We'll be back up to speed. Yeah. I'd mm -hmm. still like to do a full pass on this, though, honest truth, because this looks like fun. I just have to remember mm -hmm. where I was because I've been out of this all week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Vacations, people. Don't take them. Mm -hmm. Or no, do I'm take lying. them. Definitely no, take, take them. No, do take, take them. Do <laughs> take them. Do take them. Man, man is not meant to, to toil it endlessly, despite right. what HR tells you. Let's see. I don't want to do something in the Pirate King attack. Mm -hmm. Do you mean during the? You mean during the time of the of oh, the great time of pirates, where Pirate Orc, um, what did I name him? Orcsisius. 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 Yeah. The Orc Odyssey. The, the 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 story of one the story of one very lost uh pi one very lost orc pirate. And his his mountain of terribly drawn maps. Well, his, his minions terribly drawn maps. Because I remember the one thing about the Odyssey it was like the worst person to the worst person to ever uh, to ever ride ride behind was um, not Homer Odysseus was because everyone else on Odysseus' crew died or turned it got hit, something horrible happened to them. Oh yeah, he was basically a walking albatross. That poor lad. Yeah. And gets home and he gets murdered. He gets home and he deals with everybody trying to sleep with his wife. <laughs> Greek myths are To be weird. fair, they kind of wanted his fortune. It was pretty good fortune. I mean, he had like, I don't know, two flocks of sheep? I don't think I mean, he had cows in Greece. Just, I'm just surprised that, and well, it was also his wife did diligently um, putting up the fact that like he had to fight, fend off all these people up and all these people's trying to to claim that he died that he uh died at sea or something like that mm -hmm. there was a there was a fantastic scene from this this hilarious book called pyramids where odysseus is one of the characters and another person from our current present has encountered him and says oh yes and your wife is uh there are like 50 people trying to suit lay suit to your wife and odysseus says what that's terrible that means we have to feed them do you have any idea how much that's going to cost? I thought that I thought in pyramids, or no, it was in um Faust, uh, for our uh, from uh, it was in Faust from uh, Discworld, where he, uh, where Di where Ranswin looked at Odysseus, um, and when he was in the past at uh, at, at basically their version of Troy, and said, "You will make it home. You will. There will be stories on how well you make it home." Your journey will be legendary. Things You're, you no. don't want to hear. Yeah. Anyway, let's get back to our story, Anyways. not their oh, history. <laughs> All right. Fair yeah. enough. Let's make some history. Yeah. So, what do you want as your focus? Well, I think I want to focus on the alliance between the gnomes and the humans, who up until that point had never actually encountered each other. Uh, this occurred at year 220 of the gnomish calendar. The mm -hmm. 20th year of the, of the uh, imperial expansion. I have no idea where that fits. Probably in a discovery. 
did happen? When did happen in the microscope? Was there in a microscope? Okay. Did I, I wrote these down. Oh, no, it's me. Hi? Did anyone else go robotic then? Yes, I did. Nope. Yeah, the other two were just complete robots to me. So I'm going to just quickly. Yeah, I think it was. Discord's it. having a moment. Let's have a. Right, how's Internet. that? Roboticness check. Am I still a cyborg? No. Oh, good. You weren't a cyborg to me, so I think it's just people across the pond had problems. Yeah, it was, yeah. It was probably the, uh, the oh, intercontinental dealie. Someone cut the pipe again. Ah. All right, so anyways, I would like to focus on the alliance between the gnomes and the giants, the actually humans, and the foundations of the medium-sized empire, which occurred mm -hmm. early in the, uh, I think it was the expansion, the uh, empire period. Yep. It's got me confused, because somehow the Age of Piracy, which has the Lake Elves attacking the world market, is before Growing Empires, even though Tufort happened in 150, and the Pirate King happened in 250. Okay, to, 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 to say I'm this. very confused about this, because somehow the Lake Elves... Um, okay, look look down in the nose real fast uh, of the of the clues. Just don't worry too much about it. I know, I know. Somehow this the, the gnomish time is just bizarrely weird. So I mean, that could okay. be their own. That could be their own thing too. So like, cause remember we have because remember the civilizations all had different means of of uh, charting the time. Yeah, and calendars. Some, some Normally, you won't some... have events happen out of sequence with that. Obviously, this is all due to some broken godly godly alarm clock. Okay, the uh, attack in the Age of Piracy is not the one that happened at the end of the timeline. That was just kind of backfilled in. Oh, so okay, okay. Different attack. Yeah. That explains my confusion completely. Cool. All right. Lake Elf Pirates. So, oh wait, no, this is Rise and this would be in the the Rise and Fall sequence. Definitely a light event. Where's that copy? Yeah, some of these events are stuff that happened that we didn't touch on in that. We just added them in. Yep. So someone discovered an ancient document buried in a, somewhere, and we're adding that into the history. Or the or the or the domes finally were able to speak. We're able to get up the top of the table during the grand uh, summit of historians trying to get a, a cohesive world timeline going. And this is how you drive historians completely mad. Really, it is. It doesn't take much this is to why be you, fair. Well, this is why you need to. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> I have known several historians. They're quite mad. Oh yeah, don't get me wrong. I'm not surprised. You know, no surprise there at all. I mean, the first thing people do about history is lie about it. I object. I lie about it when I write it down. Yes, yeah, so they, they, they write it down as lies, and then people repeat those lies, and after about 500 years, that's considered to be truth. And that author was named Albert Einstein, and everyone on the bus clapped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so... The thing is, I'm not sure exactly how I want the gnomes and the humans to meet. Because the gnomes have been avoiding the humans up until this point to the fact that the humans have no idea the gnomes even exist. It made them very, confused, very confusing when they discovered a village. Maybe it was the, uh, maybe it was the, great, uh, the great explorer... Um, who, was the, who was the evil character from, uh, from Smurfs again? Gargamel? <laughs> yes, there's a great explorer Gargamel who first brought brought uh, humans notice to these tiny gnome people that were that were continuously running around his bushes. Smurfs are much smaller than gnomes, though they're more fairy sized. Pixies. Fair enough. Pixies. I just uh, made that connection. Why did that take me thirty years? Kill him. Yeah. What? You've not read those books? No, they have, and that's why they need to kill you. That's yeah, why you must exactly. die. I just. I completely blotted Smurfs out from my memory. I was aware that they existed, but they were in the do not go here section. You know that mm -hmm. part of your memory where it has all those things you never, ever want to remember ever again? Yes. yes. The part like pink memory. elephants. I, I took a scalpel to that part of my brain when I was seven for a very good reason. Which is why I mentioned, <laughs> which is why I mentioned pink elephants, because it makes it difficult to remember any of the things that aren't pink elephants. Let's go a different direction here. Okay, so I think what happened is the humans got a whole... Um, Finally, after decades of trying to find out who owned this town, which town was it anyway? 
It's the the mine. The um, can't remember which one it was. Um, the humans took over a mine. Oh, right, the silver mine. That was it back in eighty. Yeah. After almost hundred and fifty years of exploring, of, of searching, finally found the gnomes, and immediately tried to give back the mine. And the gnomes, so surprised at this, declared an unending alliance, which so far has hasn't. Ended, that is. Well, even if, it ha- even if it has, how would anyone notice? Well, you just, you sort of look down for where the stuff that you'd have to step over carefully would be. Well, I mean, they kind of did build their cities to, you know, fit. Humans completely moved out of their old home, of their old capital city. So, obviously, the alliance is going quite well. Nothing sinister happened there at all. Ah. Completely unwritten of in any history books. No one knows what went on. Uh huh. <laughs> uh huh. All right. So you added that in. Yep. Yeah, it up now. It yeah. takes a bit of time for it to update. Yeah. And I, I I would kind of like to make a scene about that. The uh, first meeting between the gnomes and humans. But the trouble is we already know what happened, so there's not really a question of what went on there. Oh. I think Bagora, I didn't not know that we found these with the wee folk and uh, that that were in this tiny tot build. I do be sorry that we ended up with the sitting and on top of it, so we be moving over now. You happy? No, I have no idea what you just said. <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right. Yeah, um, you wanna you wanna run another pass at that with a slightly less exaggerated accent so we can understand it, maybe. No. Okay. That was the scene. Uh huh. All right. <laughs> I love the fact I... everyone was stunned for five seconds. Yeah. Well, visions is more. Do I want to run that back. through a translator and try and figure out what the heck he just said? I'm sorry. I... The, the universal no. translator tried and exploded. <laughs> yeah, there's just the little bits of metal over there of what's left of it. We haven't That's got a tech. No, I'm, I'm just going to keep typing because I think that would I've be got best. Typing to do. Okay. <laughs> there we anyway, go. So we've got that start. So, uh-huh. Discord, what are you going to do with the gnomes and the human alliance? The gnomes and human alliance. Hmm. And that was at what what, what, what part of the uh, timeline was that? Age of Discovery? Uh, this is in Empire. Oh, Empire. No, I'm sorry. This right. is in decline. Rise and, Rise and Fall. Yeah. Rise and Fall, you mean? Yeah. Present fall. Okay, that's when they actually found each other. Yep, that was the first time that, that the humans met the gnomes. All right, so um, I'm going to go over here to Age of Discovery. I'm going to make a dark period for why the gnomes were origi- were originally a dark event, were originally hiding from them because of the time of the great of the great impact of the great uh, overpass, where um, many a gnome was squashed by the by the advent of, of the becoming of humanity. Gnomes are waist high on a human. Hmm. Yes. Just gonna throw that out there. No. Oh. Waist high. Waist high. Yeah. We're not talking Smurfs. You get the Smurf no. image out your head. All right. Am I, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Between sorry, three I'm... and four feet. I mean, you know, tall gnome, short human might actually be equal in almost equal in size. I'm trying to think though. Then what should I put down for that? Ah, wait, 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 I do know I have a way of doing this, because every single time I have, a, I have a, my brain is stumped, I'm going to go back to the gods. Right. So ah, just gnomish gods. I have a list. Yeah. Well, I'm going to talk about how there was a there was an unknown god. There was a there was originally a god where um basically the between gnomes and humans that there was a little the big brother or the little brother. And the seventh deity? Yes, the unknown deity, which is the human deity, which is the uh, which is the big brother deity, because you had all the little bro- the seven little brothers, and you had the one big brother. Or you know what? Maybe it's like Snow White. Should I go for that? Or you have the where well, you have the big sister one. Legend. Truly, really you have dazzling intellect. I'm look. I'm, I'm trying my best. Uh... I'm gonna go over down oh, over how here. How do you not recognize the word peasants? Peasants. Peasants. Whoa. 
uh, how does a how, what kind of how does fish know I have a water for have a word for uh, for water? I do have a word for water. It's blah, 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 blah. we got a word for air. Fish, fish. Mm -hmm. If fish had language, they would have a word for water. Yes, they'd be very efficient at it. How do you all turn world, world building into happy fun time? Somebody asks. <laughs> it's a uh, legend of the. Um, so yeah. yeah, if you want to, Taryn, give this like a second pass over. But I'm going with the legend of the large sister. Oh, yeah. um, you have Mount Olympus, right? Yeah. Upon a time, tallest mountain in the world. Yeah, once upon a time, mountain it. up north in the desert. That, the that's where the gods are. Right? Argued over there for centuries. <laughs> this, that's yeah, I was going to say, you say what now? And that's where the gods are at, right? Supposedly. Do you think at? the gods would second, settle for the second tallest mountain in the world? Oh, no, okay. it's shorter if, because if, they got tired of walking up the dang thing every time they dumped some garbage on the side. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> a lot higher up when you're on the top. Uh -huh. Okay, so I'm going to, while this was typing his up, I'm going to put mine in. It's a dark event. It's in the Ultra Alliance. Oh. Great measuring. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep. This, this is... The Union Elves and the Gnomes get into a pissy fight over the mountains, is it? Yes. Oh dear. I guess they almost go to war. <laughs> over the oh height dear. of their holy mountains. Gnomes, it's not our mountain. Look, take it up with the gods. <laughs> yes, we took it up with our gods, and they say ours is higher, so what are you going to do about it? Uh, gnome gods have you outnumbered, I think. Yes, but ours it's are better because seven not... of them now. Yes, but ours are better because they're not fun sized. So uh, I'm going to say they they start a commission, which is still going. Oh God, it's like sort of decades rumbling on. They still have a crack. To... Yeah, no one like wants it. to climb the holy mountains, so they're trying to figure a way and accurate like measuring them. <laughs> well, it's, it's really simple. You see, if you try and pace out the height of the mountain by walking up it, you just never get to the top. Because no, one, no one's going to be climbing a holy mountain. Yes. We think we might have to wait until they start making skyscrapers. So we can my, my, my well, creative... we, have, we, we do have airships on the permitted list. My creative yeah. writing brain is, is not in full juice today, but I have finished The Legend of the Large Sister. Who, who tripped, off Mount, tripped off of Mount Olympus, rolled down to the... Rolled down to the uh, uh, was never seen again, but that's a strangely when humans started showing up. No connection here whatsoever. Uh, all right, so if that was Grey's, then I think we're to add it. Yeah. So what you're saying is the gnomish euphemism for um, being with child is knocked down? Mm-hmm. Maybe. But they got back up again. Are you sure that's a dark event? I didn't put it as a dark event, I put it as a light event. Oh, my mistake. I read it wrong. Yeah. It could be a dark event. I mean, that's where she just vanished, so... I could put that over here, down over here as a... Uh... Big I mean... Of, Big Bubba Blast says, two gods in a trench coat become the new god of fashion. <laughs> Also, we're talking okay. Zeppelins or Treasure Planet style airships. I was yeah, thinking small, non-cargo sized, like one, two, maybe, maybe a small adventuring party. So you can get there fast, but you're not hauling home loot. <laughs> yeah, they're still in their early days. You probably need to stick the invention in some point. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you need to. Oh, well, they're a harpy thing, but obviously, yeah. you need to flap the wings on the airships manually. Of course. How else would the god of the how else would the god of the sky uh, mistake you for being one of their own and not and not catch you down to the earth? Well, Zebrin said the harpies invented them. They were perfect fit for the harpies because not yeah. all harpies can fly. So clearly, they came up with a way to fly. How do they work? I don't know. Yeah, we don't need to do that. That's science. Science doesn't Look, exist in fancy worlds. The gnomes of First Cathon <laughs> discovered asked too many questions like that, and then there was Second Cathon. All right. we're, 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 we, we are, yeah. we are allowing go. things to stay mystical. Add it? What are you up to? I'm adding something to the end of the timeline for the period of adventurers, medium life mates. So oh. there are subsidies created where 
gnomes and humans uh, become adventuring partners. So wherever you find a gnome in as an adventurer, you're very likely to find a human by their side, and they've been adventuring together for their entire career. Those were some of my favorite HFY stories. Ah, uh, see, this is how Gosh is Give Felix happened. <laughs> Anyone watching this who hasn't looked up HFY, if you don't hate science fiction, go do it. Okay, let's see then. Ah, uh, we're doing gnomes and humans. All right. When did the gnomes get kicked out of the world market? I'm trying to. I need to go and have a look at the actual history table because I remember the gnomes set up the world markets. Then yeah, they the got world kicked out of it. Were set, were, uh, that was the in 2050, in 250 rather, the second event from the end. Uh, could they say that they set up the Gnomish banking cartel and were too good at it? No. Okay. Okay. Actually, no, you know what? We've had a lot of stuff at the front end. We probably need to start filling out the back Come on, a bit. The gnomes have a god of peasants. Do you think they're going to start a banking cartel? I mean, yes. How else are peasants going to make sure their, money's going to make sure their money is properly... Uh, By burying it under their bed like good By peasants. By using it to buy more land. Land is the only real wealth. Burn my crops, suddenly, steal my farmhouse. Just... You're not taking the land. It's stuck. I can, I can suddenly just hear a Ferengi screaming in the distance, and I can't work out why. Uh, all right, let's Daddy. go back. Let's go back to the burgeoning kingdoms. I'm going to grab. I'm going to grab a dark event because what we haven't done anything with so far. We haven't done anything with the humans. Of House Farron hanging around near the north of the world. No, we haven't. The very isolationist ones. So I'm going to say we could do a dark event fairly early on. I think they were burgeoning kingdoms time. I'll double check that. I think they found something on their home island that made them that inward and that distrustful. It's something, something they hidden to... away, you know. Something they want to cover. Yes, okay. or a dark something like thing. that. Yeah, e yeah. So very much, it's like something that is influencing them. It's not say Croctopi related, because obviously we, you know, we have seen more of that. Yeah, yes, there's something, Croctopi, yeah. indeed. But there's something on their home island which is influencing their thoughts. Hmm. I'm just trying to think of a snazzy title for that. Why do that? Big Brother Blast says it's. I find it hilarious. This is organi organically drifted into build tales of my AL. Tales of what? Tales of my AL. Uh, I guess it's the roguelike. Uh, oh. I need to play that. I have I that. <laughs> Fair enough, I guess. I do have that game. I can go put yeah, that on I my play it more. Yeah, did you play it? I played it, yeah. I need to play more roguelikes. I tend to play a bit of each roguelike enough, not enough to get good at it, but enough to enjoy. Is it, there's a certain skill to certain of the games because you have there's like there's always a there's a high skill ceiling with that was able to make yeah. good with what you get. All right, the Brutally Island Discovery. Do I have to add a new island to the map? No, it, that's the name of the human island. Oh, okay, we're uh, can you I wrote try... it down in the notes ages ago and completely forgot about it. Okay, that's why I, I need to go, I will I need add to go find to the map. Island. I need to go find the picture of the map we have. Oh, there's several. Um, I think I know what's next. Do you have like the most recent picture of the map, Ray? Or I'll no? export the one I'm working on at the moment. Thank you. That's, That's the most recent. I haven't actually published that to you guys. Just give me a second to name the Wiggly Island. Let's put it in DMs to you. Also, I'm just typing out my event, so discard can go while I finish that off. Well, I already uh, went apparently, I forgot, Grace, oh, you since you're editing the map anyways. Um, apparently, the Lake Elves in 200, the last age of the Imperium, conquered the Sunken Temple of the Divine Dustman. So, that Sunken Temple is owned by the Lake Elves. Okay. And it's underwater. Yeah, Lake Elves don't care. 
Well, they're Lake Elves. Wow. They, they've got that power. Some elves dissect secret doors. Some elves can sleep underwater. And some elves are piratical bastards. Some. I do like how we now have a... Um... Every... Every oh, elf no though, the elves is, is... and gnomes hate each other. It's not elves and dwarves, it's elves and gnomes. And I mean, th that's the thing about the lake elves. I mean, in my in my head canon, they've always been untrustworthy bastards. I was also going to say that um, from what I was from from what legacy I gave the uh, gave the elves. Whenever two people meet, there's an el there's a there's an there is there's an elf, elf there, there. Yeah. and it's uh, because they're and I think that's also saying that their nosy is all give out. Yes. Everyone's business is elf business. But sometimes we're helpful. Not always. Mm. <laughs> Most times, nosy has busybodies. They should mind their own business. God damn it, go away. We're just trying to yeah. help you to do the right thing here, okay? We're just going to tell you how to do the right thing. We need to write up a third gnome class. Okay. So they're so they're every that in every sense they could be they could be spies they could be infiltrators they could just be like just mediators. Yeah, they could just be legitimate diplomats, or they could be spying to try and work out what you're up to. You just don't necessarily know mediators. Right, that's the right <laughs> one. <laughs> right, current map is being drawn. Ah, my files are too powerful. Oh yes, there's a size limit on Discord. Yeah, I'm switching to JPEG. That has me logged in. All right. So I uh, know I um I already went because um terror I went with making the large sister the probable progenitor of hu humans on the elf lands. Who who knows? Oh uh, yes. Okay. Oh, uh, that would be back to Terran for his second focus of the yeah. set. Oh, cool. I got a second. Oh, yes, also, if, if, you, if you're, you're your the second test, yeah, you get a second yeah. event or period and events. Like, and then, okay, good. And, and then you have your. I did, uh, but I wasn't sure. And so then you have your legacy. Be... In the burgeoning kingdoms, it's a light. I uh, think it's a light event. Yeah. I'm really not sure. Um, this is just after the founding of the temple to Nirad, who is the world and sees the world. Um, the eye and the sun, the god of the sun, whose uh, domains are the sun and the world itself, the monastery of Go Away. Um, they immediately sent out not missionaries because old school religion isn't about converting others to your cause. It's about supporting your people instead of spreading. But mm -hmm. there's they're more explorers. They go out. They set up little shrines in places where they're permitted to, and they um, provide cleric services. And they also, instead of taking money, they will take secrets. Mm. Preferably secrets about the world. Say you know about a cave. That no one's ever found before. So, well, you, so the religious cartographers. We can work something out for that. I'm suddenly having flashbacks to that Kingmaker board game we played, where you literally trade in secrets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yes, yes. So, that yeah. definitely had some impact on this. But um, yeah, so um, yeah, the explorers of the monast of the monastery of Galway, the explorers of Narad, uh, the oh, wandering explore. eyes of Narad. That's that's what it is. No, I've got wondering eyes, I see. Indeed, he does. But he of only course. has eyes for the world. <laughs> That's what he tells the world when he's Google when he's googling the uh, Google Earthing the other uh, other go female goddesses. <laughs> His sister, <laughs> <Cute. Ew. laughs> Well, oh, now we know God. what happened with the Great Knockdown. Yeah. Yep. We 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 know why the cafe has been ruined twice. Bye, sorry. That's a very that's a very uh that's a very Zeusian uh point of view, yeah. I do like I'm sorry, was, my favorite someone's biggest criticism of um Hercules Disney film is they make Zeus into a loving family man. <laughs> Clearly it was not written about Earth mythology. I mean he Or was. it was written by one of the cult by one of the secret cults of Zeus. Technically, he away. was. He just, Zeus just had a problem. He just had uh, urges and issues. Urges and issues. I'm going to stick with A because it's less likely to get me murdered by a non-existent secret cult of Zeus. Totally non-existent secret cult of Zeus. Obviously, they're they're totally fake, and I made them up. Don't go looking for them. No. I say this completely not under duress. Wouldn't have no. said the last if I were. Perish the thought. 
Um, all right, so that's so. What about a legacy then? What is your legacy for the? What's your first legacy for the great story of the humans and, and gnomes? This is just kind of um, like what 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 do you think of the take home from this period is? From this particular uh, from this particular I'm, focus, yeah. What I'm seeing is. The gnomes make friends easily, and the humans are loyal. Interesting. I mean, consider they uh, they met back in the um, the rise and fall period, and yet they still have the whole buddy system going on all the way up at the uh, after the Croctopus Wars. I'm glad that I'm glad the legacy wasn't that humans have a very thick Scottish accent. Heck no. <laughs> <laughs> oh hell no. <laughs> oh hell no! To quote uh, a certain I am, philosopher, I am very easily amused. All right, All right. so so um, take, that in the focus box, and mm -hmm. take a look at the other focus box and see if you can add in a bit for your, for each one there. Well, he gets a second one now. Well, yeah, but remember yeah. he has. There's like every other focus down here on the bottom where uh, I was you had say, the Cobalt. Doesn't discard get a run as well. Nope, you, you're uh, giving you two. Oh, okay. So that's I'm still only one up focus, so you can have a second focus to make up for the fact you're missing last week. Oh, yes, yep. and then we'll catch up with discard sex. Then, yeah, then we'll be up to date again. Yep. Yeah. Well, we also you still need Terran's events for when Terran need the Cobalt, the Harpies, and all that stuff. But he can add that during uh, the back end too, if he wants. Well, if I've got one for the Harpies, it's going to be the invention of air, of Harpy airships. Yeah, you can write that in. You can write that in. Like, also, what do you have for the? How about you for the Cobalts then? Because like he has at least uh, about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. Oh no, he has a uh, yeah eight events to go through. You don't have to do them all if you don't want to. Yeah, don't worry about it. I just want to get your uh, take on the parts of those those parts. Okay. I think there. that's a pretty good write up. Clerical services to anyone for gold or secrets, preferring geological. Uh, the symbol. Ah, uh, it's a typo. The symbol of the eye in the sun is known in even the smallest towns. Basically, anywhere you go, you can find one of these guys, and he'll probably cure your wounds. Ah, uh, the illuminated right. ones. It's an eye in a sun, not an eye in a pyramid. I mean, where else would you? Where else would the shiny bits could be? Of course, from certain directions, the eye is actually the eye in uh, the the sun. Is looks like the world. All right, so my so you're taking my second focus, right? I'm perfectly okay with discard having a go bef before me, so I can think about things a bit. Yep, that's fine. Um. Hmm. I kind of want to do. Um, I was, I kind of want to take mine. Uh, so we're so we're doing this. Is second. We're how many focus passes are we doing again? Probably one more after this. So do three. Okay, I'd like to do... see us do some actual some events, some nitty gritty stuff. I'm sorry, yeah. some scenes. You know, at least do one or two passes of scenes because they look like a lot of fun. Aaron, I haven't read the read the scene part of this because this is mainly just us making the uh, uh, making scenes the scenes are easy. Better. Yeah. Choose a question you want answered about the world. Choose a stage where or when it happens. Choose some characters uh, that need to be there. And mm -hmm. then um, two characters who have to be there. And exclude characters who cannot be there. All right, you know what I'm going to do? When I, you know I have my focus, um, since it is very here in the contemporary period of the Orcish Empire. I, I kind of want to do a round, since I have one more round for the for the um, rumors and stuff like that for venturing hooks. I want to have the story, I want to have the focus of the three sons for uh, for Odysseus where he made, where he uh, sired where um, after receiving the uh, blessing oh, of the gods Orcustus Orcustus who yeah, who after he sired three, his three sons um, of the three sons themselves Yes, this was sort of post the map again. We had the yeah. Orcish Emperor Orcusus rise up. Then yeah, he formed the Orcish Empire, had three sons, and the Orcish Empire then immediately split up. 
be fair, he did go down stabbing and wounding the Cractopus. Like, yeah. yes, he did a lot of good work. He did. He did, he did his thing. He did exactly what he, he did. The thing where he had uh, he base uh, he did his both his uh, his both his duties. I'm just wanting to see what the fallout is because he left an empire with three with three heirs. Okay, so what? How are you starting that? How am I starting that? Um, where did where did the where did it start up? Because um, here's a question: Is it post Cractopus or pre Cractopus? Where well, they were born during the Empire was pre. Yeah, mm -hmm. the Orcish Empire. They were born in the Orcish Empire, and he he. I'm going to take this over here. Killed to be it a... the Cractopus Wars. Okay, so I'm going to grab a dark period slotted after the Carcoctopus Wars. So I'm going to put one column to the right. Wait, Seems to be updating a bit quicker this week. Um, the heroes just moved a column to the left somehow. Okay, let me go over here and put this, put this over here and put this to a column to the right. Shouldn't the heroes arrive be after the Croctopus Wars? Yeah, this, is, this right here shifted, so let me move this back over here. Let just nobody edit. Yeah, there edit. we go. Like, let the person no, touch anything. Edit. Yeah. No one touch anything. I'm not anything even looking to see what starter. changes I can make. Here we go. There we go. Here we go. So now we have a dark period right here where um, the sundering of three uh, the sundering of three suns. I fill everything below that in white. I'm gonna create a new period between um uh, between the Croctopus after the Croctopus Wars called suddenly a light period appears. <laughs> All right, so and so we have the sundering of the three suns. So that's basically this is the period of the right. Yeah. And as you've created a period, you're allowed to add an event into it. Event into it. All right. So the first one is a dark, a dark period. It's going to be a dark event because earlier in the earlier during the um, the original thing of the Orcish Empire on the uh, four before over here, um, there is a thing where a game of there's a light event for the game of sins where the three goddesses are plotting their own uh, are are plotting their own game with each other. Using yeah. their uh, why well, this is a should be a dark period. It should not be a light period. Why did they make this a light period? It Just change it. It's fine. Yeah, there we go. No, no, no I mean, I mean a light event. Why is it a light time. event? It's a, it's not a light event. So it should be a dark event. Um, so this is where uh the game the let me whoops 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 give me a second. Let me fix this. Here we go. First one is the game begins. Um, okay, goddesses. There we go. The three goddesses divide division between the three sons of Augustus and facilitate the split of the empire. Because they want an actual good beginning to, they want an actual good uh, starting position for each, for each, uh, for each kingdom, not a one where, you know, one gets murked in the very beginning of the, the very beginning of the barbarian age. You know what I mean? Are you sure this is a dark event? Oh, I the mean, Orc yeah, the Orcish Empire was at least um, like unifying. Like the Orcs. Well, no, I just, I mean, the last thing that happened in the Orcish Empire was their king was brutally was uh, murdered, killing the Croctopus. Yes, but this is the, uh, but this is this is the this is the um, after this is basically the um, the game coming. This is the price coming due for their blessings is that they've taken each one, taken one of their one of his sons. And it and initiated their own empire, their own empire game. Right. I'm just I'm, I'm, I'm not seeing the 
darken that. I mean, yes, the gods are using you as a personal to, uh, as a uh, personal playing piece on the great game, but they want you to succeed. I I see it as a dark event because it's the three splinters of the Orcish Empire in fighting. Yeah, it's it's not okay. dark for the people; it's dark for the world. Okay, yeah, I can see that now. Yeah. Yeah, the if it's immediately like... set to infighting instead of immediate instead of uh, trying to make good on what they've already got. I can see that being a dark event for sure. Yeah, this this I, this, I... Is, this this is like any empire where you have one too many, where you have Gavelkin turned on oh, and one too many errors. Fucking yeah. Gavelkin! I swear, <laughs> I've ruined so many games. <laughs> yeah, well, look, no, I'm... it just takes you ten years or so to gather up all the pieces, and it makes you stronger at the end of it, right? No, it doesn't. It completely annihilates your armies, and then next door neighbor eats you. Yes, no, this, is, it's on to me. this is essentially this is essentially that where each god is essentially took in uh took in their piece and their for their uh for their um part and that has facilitated the has through their own machinations facilitated their own um segment of the empire. This <laughs> does explain why the uh the uh, gnomish settlement of Winterchan never got uh, totally obliterated by orcs. They were yes, busy. the orcs were too busy stabbing each other. Yep, I'm gonna follow this up with a second dark event. Mm -hmm. um, look to your own defenses. Mm -hmm. um, local orc um, generals spread across the world. Settled down as warlords. Oh, great. Because the orcs are spread across the war world fighting the Croctopus worlds. Yes. And suddenly, but like, the Croctopus worlds are over now. Yeah, but the Empire's broken down. There's these three different guys defending them things and. Like a bunch of guys are there, like all the generals are just going, Do you know what? This is a nice area. I'm gonna live here. Just stay. They uh, basically their uh the command and control has stopped and <sighs> has uh and they're basically like, you know what? I'm I you leader? I leader. Because remember that at this point in time, by this point, like the Crocto the um Orcish Empire has split into three different empires. Yeah. So I want that to be its own like valid period of uh, of rendering and sundering and so forth. So, yeah, it basically, you know, loads of armies of orcs just decide, sod it. We can't decide which of these we're going to do. We're just going to stay here. This is a nice place. Yep. This is Stop it. We're not going home. So the uh, little pockets of orcs spread across the world because the orcs are campaigning. Mm -hmm. and the Crocodile Wars, I think, were kind of quite a unifying thing for most places, apart from the like northern elves. Who sod it off? Who sod it off? Yeah. We didn't sod off. We never left. We just didn't go anywhere. Yeah. That but... seems to be what I was hit with, so. Okay. That's me done for that. To add it then. Okay. I'm going to go back a bit to the Orcish Empire. Oh, yeah. And add in an event called the Triple Crown. Ah. Uh -huh. That's a good one. Yep, so, tre like, jewels, medals, and treasures from all, par all parts of the Orcish diaspora are united into a single three-part crown uh, that sits upon the brow of the Orcish Emperor. So you're saying that this uh, crown was split in three, then, or how is that working? Well, no, it's, it, it's ha it has three parts, but it's unified into one thing. Hmm. Sort of like the crown of Egypt, but not really. Okay. Right. Okay. Because if someone else wants to lose it in another event, they can. You can always nuke Atlantis. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, Atlantis deserves it. That movie was. Yeah. <laughs> All right. In which case, um, I feel like we need a light event in the Sundering. Oh, and I want to yeah. say it's following on from the sort of creation of these many different orc splinters sort of scattering about all over the place. I'm kind of remembering Beckett from Pirates of the Caribbean. It's just good business. You now have so many opportunities to trade with like a bunch of orcs who might be a great bit of hard muscle. And equally, the major powers now have loads of people who would want their goods. Because you now have so many different orc bits, the you know they've settled on some random corner of some island. You know we could be farmers, or we could just buy it from next door in exchange to be their cell sold. You know it's kind of a a mercenary culture the orcs are now developing. I'm thinking, yeah, 
these sort of great splinters. I think I was thinking the exact opposite. <laughs> like exactly the exact opposite. Well, to be fair, you can just blow up Atlantis. I wasn't disgust. going to. But it, 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 metaphorically speaking, you can also... Oh, I know, I know. I wasn't going to blow up that Atlantis, rather. I'm not going to just directly counter something someone has done. Okay, That's so... Um, is it me next, then? Uh, yes. Fantastic. So, I'm going to blow up the Orcish Empire of Chad. Okay. Dramatically. Get some um, program open. <sighs> because, well, let's be fair. What I really want to do is do two or three more passes through world building so we have some ruined empires to find in our basements. But that's just not on. So, um, Chad got stuck in a time loop for who knows how long. It's basically 50 feet taller built on ruined empires now. This is a dark event. You don't say. So yeah, um, there's still orcs there. They don't really have much um, of anything left. Do we know anything and about the time? And it's chock full of ruins and horrible abomination monsters. I, wizard husbandry, this certainly isn't entirely your fault, but a lot of it is. Oh, yeah, that's a callback. Remember, What's kids, it? animal husbandry is entirely legal until they catch you at it. <laughs> I should stress. What's I... the name of that island? The orc was it just the orc? The Empire of Chad for that island? It was just Chad. Yeah, definitely. I island never got a name. Eldus. I think it was it's one Chad of island. the. Yeah. Yeah. Let's play uh, yeah. fair. Elba's the name of the island. Which guy and... was which guy was Chad again? Lower uh, right corner. I know, like I was asking Gray, which guy would you think which uh, was which uh, was Bormigan Bormigan or which um oh. uh, leader was that? Let's see, where's my notes? What's that not on here? No, I must have put that into the, um... Chad was Bormagog, Bormagog. And he was, uh, uh, and which guy was he again? Was that power, death, or taxes? <laughs> it didn't actually write that down. I'm guessing power, considering. Yeah. yeah. Probably. It seems to fit. So yeah, um, the Empire of Chad is now older than the entire rest of the planet put together. <laughs> so should I change um, it to the ancient Chad Empire? It's now the ancient Chad Empire. Yes, perfect. Because sensible metaphysics are for other people. Because we live in a world place where gods walk the earth, sometimes literally, uh, do whatever they want to, and a gnomish empire has grown up uh, has grown up around gathering up and disposing properly of their trash. Because this is what happens when you don't properly dispose of your god trash, people. Uh, you get golems of, of, of underpants and cities thrown into the, uh, into the lake. And, well, Chad. Generally just Chad. Generally just Chad. With apologies to the nation of Chad. That still exists, right? I haven't watched. I haven't been following. Think it does? Cool. I hope so. It always was my favorite, even before Chad was a thing. Yeah. That's around. what happens when you try using a magical artifact to um, accelerate your martial prowess. Don't do it. Stick to licit performance enhancers. Oh. All right. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a fairly accurate title, it must be acknowledged. Yeah. All right, Discord, how are you going to end this up? Am I going to end this up? Uh, so this is the legacy of uh, of the orcs, right? Yeah. Um, the legacy of the three of the three sons. Um, 
Let's see now. We have... Dad would have been proud. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Fitting. Very fitting. Every one, every one of them claimed this is exactly what their father want, or their what their family father wanted. So dad would have been proud. And who no, knows? Argue with it. Yeah, yeah exactly. Even, even the chat ask. guy is actually like the four hundredth great son of Bormagog, Bormagog the twentieth. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, I beyond a certain point, I suspect they just gave up on the number scheme for him. It's just like, well, what iteration are we on at this point? Well, uh, because the time for I think he's four hundred fiftieth. Formagog times 10 to the 34th power. Oh, don't introduce algebra, please. <laughs> that sounds like Ragnar reading. That's not allowed here. <laughs> Excuse me, I have you seen the host of this channel? Neither have I, I but I've watched some of his videos. Grognarding is fine. I fuck advanced mathematics, though. <laughs> this isn't my day job. It's just, after Bormagarg, 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 they decided it took too long to say, and so they... But it would be rude to omit any of his ancestors, so... Compromises were made. Mathematical compromise was made. Algebra was invented, and scientific powers and uh, scientific power was developed in order to not be rude. Ah, yes. Truly the best reasoning of all. Social awkwardness. More that being rude to an orcish empire tends to have fatal consequences? True. Unless you're kobolds. Just because you can run away doesn't mean the consequences didn't try to be fatal. <laughs> uh, so they exist. Them. They just exist somewhere else. Uh, Discord, you get a second. You get one more event. Oh wait, no, I didn't. Oh, my, second, my second event. Um, yes. We. What are the other uh, two things? We have time loop. We have. And we have two others. What are the other? Two? I'm trying uh, to remember the got time loop. Here. Got look into your own defenses and. Good, good business. And Just the triple crown. Business. And the triple and crown. And the triple crown. And the triple yeah. crown back earlier, yeah. Yeah, if you want to do something with the triple crown, it might be a good time. I think it would have been a cool to do that as a scene and see what we could make out of it. Mm. And then have it blown up next scene, because obviously. Well, that's our mole. Over here for the, over the Venturing Guild. I'm going to make uh, the triple crowning a... Uh... A, a, a not a win con, but a major plot hook. Ooh, hooks. I've got to just fix this game as if it's just slightly darker than the other than it's bugging me. There we go. Uh, <laughs> um, don't look at the large sister, and that's just rude. She's not fat, she's tall. Mm. You know, no, that's better for my second passive focus or for rumor for for rumors. I'm going to go over here for dark event. Um, uh, what are you thinking? Round, uh, I've, just, I've just noticed that we've got anonymous hamster, anonymous beaver, anonymous penguin, anonymous dingo, anonymous ifrit. One of these things oh. does not belong. Oh, well, no, it doesn't, does it? <laughs> I signed in with my actual Google account to this. <laughs> oh, yes. That's a th- mm. I switched browsers. Just quiet. That. I'm still th- I'm still I'm trying to th- I'm trying to write creatively here and it's not the smartest thing it's when difficult. it comes to English prose. Oh, that's fine. Spinning of the crown. Yeah, don't prose it, just make it happen. We'll take dog roll, it's fine. Made the main piece. Red docket. I have no idea where that comes from. What's a, what's a coronet? 
Coronet is kind of like a sort of small. Yeah, it's a it's, oh. a, low, it's a lower status crown. Yeah. So it's a crown, but it's, you can't call it a crown. Yeah, I was thinking that it was basically the the, the great crown, the crown, the, the the great three crown, which had all three parts of empire, uh, war, death, and taxes all around it. So each one was basically was split in three and was made the headpiece for each of the of the sun's uh, main uh, main uh, main coronets, because not all of them are as great as their as great as their father, or as great as their previous the, the original empire. It's going to become kind of kind hearts and coronets, is it? Oh God, mm -hmm. that'd be a callback. What was <laughs> what was what was that? Great? Kind hearts and coronets. Oh, kind hearts and coronets. Yeah, it's a very very <laughs> English 1950s comedy about a serial killer. Yeah, as you do, really. I I don't know what no. the confusion here is. Sounds very English. Yes, it is. It is a black and white evening comedy about a serial killer. It's basically he's the last in line to a um a dukedom. Spited by his family when his mother dies, that none of them turn up to his mother's funeral. Um, so he decides he's going to murder them all to become the Duke. They spend the rest mm. of the film bumping them all off one by one, and every one of them is played by Alec Guinness. It's kind of Alec good. Guinness plays the entire family. Mm. I did not catch that somehow. I think yeah. I saw no. pretty, yeah, I did see that one. Pretty good. Kyle House, House and is an amazing film, and it's well worth a watch. Mm hmm. Can confirm. Episode like looking at this from the outside, all three like all three empires could be having their own internal issues. But like if you want to reaffirm reestablish like the main empire the, the, the main victory condition of the game is to re is to reassemble the crown. If you're an orc. I mean if you're any if you want the if you want to take over the empire. I mean you could be. You could have the. Basically, if you if it's a no win scenario for three goddesses, if someone else does it, so all three of them will be against you to do and an attempt to do this because it's breaking their game. Oh, in the god game, sit, sit, right, right, right. That makes yeah. more sense then. It's a win condition in the divine game. Yes, it's a win condition in the divine game. Because they're because they have a rule zero if um if either if the crown is made by someone that's not affiliated with one of the three and not an orc or something like that, then all three have lost and have to eat uh, basically eat crow on it. I mean, in that case, you just you know roll up a new game, right? <laughs> well, that means we have to roll up an entirely new empire. <laughs> just 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 you know, scourge the planet with holy fire. Start from scratch. No, <laughs> not again. <laughs> All right. Bring on four four times destroyed Cathar. Screaming intensifies. So that's wraps up this card. Mm -hmm. Hit with Terran again. All right. Well, I know what I want to do was uh, just a one-off event during the, um, the Harpy. What's that? What's the name? In the Age of Discovery. Got yeah. that written in. Yep, yeah, drop that in. Yep. Probably color it. RP airships. RP airships. Invent one man airships. The originals didn't have wings because mm. harpies. Alright, let's see what the originals happens. are just way kind of a bit more freight. The originals offered more lifting power. Where did my there it is. Let's see. Do we have the map up? Um, I've linked in Discord. Okay, that that works. Uh, 
I do not see your link in Discord. None of these are a map. Um, it is not pinned. All right, let's try, some channel, I let's try linking that again, shall we? Dropped it in. You said it was too big and you had to reset. Yeah, I dropped it. a second one on. Try that one. Probably got to open one of these 305 tabs, but not worth finding. Yep, there's a map. Thank you. Yep. So I, know, I think I know what I want to do. I just have to take a look at it. Right. Did we do an explore on the Father Empire and the conquest of Silver Peak and Cavendish Port, Birdcatcher, and all of that? Um, not really. I don't think I didn't think we did, but I wanted to be sure. Cool. I'd like to. I'd like to look into that. Uh, that occurred during the Empire phase, right? I think it did. Yes. Yeah. So it would probably be in growing empires. Where's my timeline? Yeah. All right, this is a dark event for the Harpies. Yeah, it was the Harpies, but a good event for the Orcs. <laughs> Flip a coin, okay. Ah, dark event. Probably could go full for a full period here, but oh well. All right, let's see. It was the orcs established a port. No, they conquered the port. They got such a good role. They conquered the second. Yeah, they, the they, mountain. they conquered the port. They conquered Silver Peak, and then they built a fort. And they established a fortress. Yeah. And later on, they built Grand Port, which then got ruined by Croctopuses. <laughs> Out today. Right. I really should update the bring, bring to put the more up to date one on the image. Right, let's update this. This, there we go. There we go. Oh, yes. And I would very much like to do a uh, a scene on the on the conquest of Ca of uh, Cavendish. All right. All right. Wow. And who is um, who is your, who's the player? Is that his question? Oh, everyone gets to play in a scene. Um, the question is, let's see, what is it that allowed the orcs to go on to conquer Silver Peak? Okay. All right, um, and this where the players, where is the, uh, the the characters who are required? Let's see. All right, so the scene is the orcs have landed. They've managed to get a foothold in the town into the town, and they're gearing up for their final assault. Um, the characters who are there have to be the orcish general and his chief lieutenant, and I'm going to say. Nope, nobody's banned. Anyone can be here. Harpies can hire mercenaries. Where, They're friendly. Where, enough. where on the, where on the, uh, on the map is this? Uh, um, this is Father Island on the uh, yeah. far right side. Father Island. Father Island, just north of okay, the Winds here of we go. Okay, here we go. Yeah, and that's that Silver Peak right there. Yep. Or Cavendish. And I'm gonna make it green because it's a scene. All right, then who? Oh. Um, then I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to be the or the lieutenant to the orc general in the tent, looking out, looking out upon the sky on the on the horizon after we have established our uh oh, our, our our landing. Oi, Captain, that's a pretty mountain over there. I'm the captain. I just shoot him in the head and push him over the side. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay then. Why can't I change the background color of this? Um, no, I don't. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> oh, 
I make Clara at him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, who else is in? Everyone can, should, can grab a character, even if you just want to be random orc soldier A and never do anything. I'll grab a uh, random orc soldier who will arrive at a certain moment with a notice or a warning. Okay, sounds good. I'll oh, be the that's a good one. Yeah, I'll be the elvish observer. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> of course. Uh, I yes. do want to remind people that this, if while well, this event is occurring, the elves are busy taking back their um, taking back their island from the orc inf from the orc assault. I think the elves were taking it back, or was it the Croctopus who were attacking it? The Croctopus took out the orcs, and the lake elves right. took out the Croctopi. That's right. That's right. The Croctopi are taking out the orc stronghold from which this attack was launched. So that is definitely a thing that can happen in the middle of this event is, hey guys, um, our home base just got crushed, so we're not getting any reinforcements. There's also the so, fact that elf, anyways, there's, there's always an elf somewhere Yes. in NEC. Yay. Dang Eldar. Uh, anyways, after we've Excuse all picked me? characters, we need to reveal a thought that they're having at this very moment. Okay. Where's, where's the reinforcement? And then we begin. Okay. Uh, my thought is, oi, that's a pretty mountain over there. Rock Island? Uh, uh, Father Island. Father oh, Island. right, yeah, okay. Yeah, the, the Father Island. Our right-hand side of the map, um, needing to establish Birdcatcher Fort and capture conquer Silver Peak. The question is, why? Or rather, how? Very, very careful. Yeah, the elf is thinking, uh, let you and him fight. Classic. Like, I'm not involved, but if you want to kill each other, that's cool. Okay. How about Mr. Orc? How about Mr. Orc, uh, soldier man? Soldier messenger man. man. I think the messenger is probably going to be coming from the fort that's being kicked over by the Croctopi just going, so I know you were expecting reinforcements, but, you know, they're not coming. Well, I am going to be running the uh, Harpy Elite Sniper Squad, who is peppering the orchids from thirty from uh, four hundred feet up. Plink, right. plink. All right, so as the captain, you know, I see guys going along. We have to move fast, lads. Get up there, show them your best teeth. Because you're orcs, you've got your teeth. Get up there, right, Captain? He takes his squad and goes after Silver Peak. Harpies are thinking, these orcs don't stand a chance. They can't even fly. Bring up the we'll neck guns, lads. Up Bring up the neck guns. And yeah, we roll out two giant kind of um, ballistas with this, like a net between them. And to um, start firing into the air. It looks like you're in trouble, Orcus General. You should probably commit your reserves. But for this? No, I don't need my reserves. He Not looks behind here. him. The res he looks behind him. The reserves are gone. Yes, I know the reserves are gone. Yeah, they've gone to Silver Peak. Yeah, this is just a delaying tactic. The, the, the main force is already gone around the, around the back, cutting them off. Ah, this is why okay, they say this one never sets in the yep. Orcish Empire. Yep, the general pins them in place, and then um, it's a rapid movement. You have yeah. a second. You have a you have a missive that has come in. The lieutenant has sent a missive saying we have conquered Kyoto Silver Peak. That's that for you, Serpentis. Yes. Uh, do orcs ride horses in this setting? I. Yeah, orcs, horses, unicorns. Oh, orcs! Yes, gotta go, love a good orc. Well, this is like All a. Right. This is the second so, missive because you said uh, go out, go at them, lads. And the, while the lieutenant was looking up a silver peak, he was like, "Yes, sir," and went off to silver peak. It's a it's a it's a comical miscommunication of uh, uh of Ch the chain of command. That answers that question. Um, no, no, Gray answered the question quite handily. The attack on Cavendish was a diversion to 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 cover the attack on Silver Peak. It just worked better than expected. Instead of drawing off the reserves, we took the town. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then obviously use the sword supplies there to establish, since you weren't shipping them out, to establish Birdcatcher. 
Yeah, makes sense. Nice. All right. Yeah. So we're sticking with the Father Islands for this one, the Orcs of the Father Islands. Is this where this um this this round or what's going on here? That's that was Terran's event, so it's now round to you for your event. Okay, now my text is gone. Why is my text gone? Uh, it's back on my screen. Cool. Can you copy it for me? Uh, no. no the the event text is gone screen. from. Uh, oh no, that's 16. gone. Yeah, yeah. You'll have to undo that. I have no idea. I did. It didn't. Edits a personal base, so. You know. How's that? Oh. Yep, that did it. Yeah, I mean control. I can actually undo. Oh, I undid. It just didn't undo. Yeah. At least no, it's green it's, now, the way it ought to be. Okay, so it, this is. That was Terran's event, so back to discard, are we? Yep. Yep, so the focus for this is the Father Empire. Oh, the imp so, so the actual Father Empire over here on Father yeah. Island. Um. Hmm. 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 And this is happening at what period of time? Well, this is actually the invasion of Father Island. Yep. So it's the the sundering. The, the Father Empire doesn't appear until the like just oh, before. The... Like I would say, this is the the lens is Father Island. Yeah, yes, that's the best. Yeah, the, uh, the first event was the conquest. Yeah. With a follow on, the first with the first scene was event was conquest. With a follow on scene of how did they manage to do so well? Here's how. All right, um, I'm going to go over here and the split. And this is is this happening? Uh, so it's, it's being established in the. Uh... I'm going to go over here on the splitting of the three sons of the establishment of, of the Father Imp. And this is like an empire that's not dealing with Chad or any other three, right? Father Empire doesn't actually appear until um, like current here. It's in the surviving the attack, the heroes arrive. Ah, uh, okay. So it's a very, very new empire. Yeah, it's at the moment it's part of the Orcish Empire as a whole. Until the Sundering, of course. All right, all right, all right. Give me a second. I'm going to make a light event over here, which is, and that's going to be. Dang it! Now I want to see. Now I want to do an, a, a lens on the golden lich just to see what he does. I mean, he's been perfectly happy sitting away, chuntering in the background, not doing very much. He basically. hasn't done any empire level events that we've noticed, but who's to say he doesn't have his fingers in all of these pie? Hmm. All right, with Munchy Joel and the Royal Geologist um, come to an accord with, with the Father Island, and which will allow them to car crash on its couch. Because remember that Father Island's like supposedly the Sinti Sindian's god place as well. Kids today waking me up from my eternal slumber. It's just no respect, man. None at all. None at all. God damn all. Well, God's damn all nope. in this case. Me, me damn? Hard to say. Also, Gray, I'm going to have a grumbly nitpick. Yeah. I think one of the three brothers is still called Label. Label oh. Boring Gun. Oh, yes, <laughs> it is. The Isle of Label. Yeah, it's man. like the Isle of Babel, except it's less vocal. Uh, what, should, what should it be called? Uh, well, it's, it's the only one that isn't really the islands of uh, Horizon Empire at this point. So that's more of a common one. Placeholder. I'm going to put a Ooh. common in its label. That's my yeah, best guess, because there's not really much we can say about Father Island over here. Yeah. That works. I just, had remember, an idea. Uh, just remember the first rule of, disc of uh, Discord's rule all typos are canonical. Yeah. Oh, God, no, please. Yes. Right away. <laughs> what did I we do? We established this way before we started. All typos are canonical. No. No, don't don't you put that evil on. Too late. <laughs> oh, okay, look, I'm fixing it. I'm fixing it. All right, so uh, whose turn actually is it? Um, I'm slightly lost track. Uh, bound to me, I think. Uh, yep. I have no idea what the turn order is to begin with. I'm it's in the bottom left. left. It's by the focuses. Yeah. Oh, so there's more. Yeah. 
Yes. All right. What do I want to do with the Father Empire, the Father Island? Oh, I see. No grognardic. My bad. Is exponents really grognardic? Ish. Hmm. I'm still stuck. I want to do something with bird catcher. Sounds good. Remember, just because it didn't happen in um Ah shoot, I can't remember the map Not map imperial doesn't Imperium, mean yeah. it didn't happen. Yeah. It just means it wasn't notable enough. It wasn't imperial scale. So either they didn't write it down or they were too embarrassed to write it down officially. Well, looking at the catches on the river from Silver Peak to Newcastle Sato. So at some point, whatever there's silver is going to probably try and go down river. Like the easiest way to ship heavy metals. So there's probably going to have to be the diplomacy between like the orcs and the uh, the harpies. A bird catcher was an orc. Yeah, but the, it's kind of like it's on the it's on the way for a trade. Oh thing. right, it's it goes past that river. Yeah, it's on a different screen. I'm going to put a light event. This will probably be in Rise and Fall. Because I think that's pretty much where the orcs we conquered. Um, so it's just going to be common trade. The orcs are bird catcher. But, um, they negotiate passage along the river. Silver. That means the, the orcs and the, the harpies are at least talking to each other and a bit more cordial. Orcs and diplomacy, mind. Yeah, that's why it's an event. We have another label <laughs> just south of Mount Olympus. I'm actually not sure what that's supposed to be. Oh, what? Oh, yeah. That's just another random label. The the text tool is a little random. And we'll just Clearly, occasionally... we just have a flag of labels. Yeah. All right, that's me done. Not the most imaginative one, but yeah. It'll do. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, I'm going to add an event, the Endless Warrens of New Casito. Uh -huh. where, like shortly before uh, Father Island separated, an expedition was done because Casito was like built and then ruined and then rebuilt. It's like underneath the city of Casito, there's a series of underground warrens of the old city. And an expedition sent in there found contradictory results. They found they found evidence that each one of the three sons had had successfully reunited the Orcish Empire, that that the first emperor had returned, that the father was still alive and was leading the empire. And it was eventually discovered that the warrens were completely endless and just produced an endless amount of writings that completely contradicted the history of the world. The origin of fake news. I do, I do like that because there is a entire segment of fallen london where there are these wastes that people go out to collect um um basically archaeological materials from but the wastes have essentially been hooked up to the um parable as part of parallel called the was not 
which is all the fake things where all the is not is where the fake things are. So essentially, it's a, it's a commentary on how um, history is merely a set of perceptions of what you think happened in the past. And your evidence may not actually be evidence of what you're thinking or if it's proving. I think we already had that discussion. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. That's what I'm spent this then. Fill out that map again. Let me see how important the map is. Hmm. That's a lovely mountain on Father Island. Oh, big, yeah. I mean, it's it's not as grand as the other two, but it's it's perfectly suitable if, say, a certain volcano cult wanted to set up shop, I think. <laughs> Nothing stopping them except for, you know, the endless amount of water, pirates, croctopi, inclementness, el and the elves wanting to murder all of them on and, site. And also the, uh, also the isle, the, the isle itself, which is still having a standoff with its wife. Well, I have a question about the Elvish Observer. That's why you sail from the north. Uh, is there an Elvish Observer in the volcano cult? Uh, well, given that the volcano yes. cult were a bunch of splinter elves to begin with, Ah, they observe themselves. That makes sense. Yeah. Elves, making sure quantum happens. <sighs> I hate no, temporal mechanics. Even, even though, even, here's the thing, even though uh, the, 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 the volcano elves here, hated by all the other elves, they still have their own elvish observer. No, <laughs> no, sadly, they're hungry. probably prescribed at this point. Um, mainly because, yeah, that whole blowing up a temple, they elves did not like that. Look, the elves just observe reality to make sure that it happened. They don't even charge you for it. Look, we don't just arbitrarily charge people for random things. We charge people for doing a good job. <laughs> There's an important difference. This was also yeah. an HF Live story, one of my favorites. I have no idea what you're talking about, by the way. Like this whole HFAY thing, or whatever it is. Oh, right? it's a science fiction kind of a thing, which means it's banned in the in the game. But um, okay. it's it took the question: Why are what if humans weren't the boring race? What if humans were the really cool race in sci-fi universe, in fantasy universe, instead of being the boring and average? Started with: What if Earth was a hell world compared to the rest of the universe? This particular one, humans are the, are the species capable of observing quantum reality just by looking at it. Everyone else needs special training or things start to fall apart. It's an odd story. Can't remember what it's called. Fun, though. Well, quite. Okay, I'm just typing mine out, but... Oh. That means, means Terran gets his... I'm next. Get your last event for this one, and then your time as the lens is over. Fantastic. So this event will occur, I think, in the Age of Piracy, because that's... Yes. Technically, it keeps going, but... Um... This is a light event in the Age of Piracy, although it leads directly into the destruction of... Um... What's the name? Why can I never remember the name of things in this game? It's because we've written a lot of names. Because there are a lot of names. Uh, yeah. Directly to the destruction of Grandport, but... Uh... The city, the uh, port of Grandport is trading with the gnomes, specifically a black market trade in cast off god things. Oh, because that goes incredibly well for all people involved. Doesn't it just? So oh, there was a thing about cast off god small clothes. No, 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 no. no. we were talking about beforehand. Ask you about. This goes into why there are so many layers of dungeon underneath, because, well, god stuff does weird stuff. Fair. It's also, you know, it's layers of clothing. The joke writes itself. 
it's specifically never clothing. That's where the goal of godly small clothes came from. No one picked <laughs> up the clothes. Well, no one picked up the uh, the underwears, but we th we thought that I thought the golem of godly small clothes was actually a golem that was a laundry golem that went berserk. Decades and decades and centuries and millennia of um of once worn underclothes that never get touched by anybody and end up getting lonely and then mad and then oh, so mad very over. mad they started throwing cities in the ocean. Look. When you're a giant golem wearing nothing but godly small clothes, you need to pass the time somehow. And sometimes that rage involves taking out a small city. It's not just wearing them, it's composed of them all the way through to the middle. I would not want to be one to try and pick all that. No, you don't want to have anything to do with it unless you lack a sense of smell. I've lost Grandpa. Yo. We've, we've lost Grandpa? Yeah, where is that? Uh, it's on the Father Island. Yeah, if you look at Father oh, Island, yeah. it's, of Pseudo. it's what's left of it. Yeah. I just realized that that wasn't a lagoon, that's the ruins of Grandport. <laughs> oh, yeah. Clearly it was doing pretty well for itself, what with this black market trade, before it got invaded by Croctopi and destroyed. Repeatedly. Rather firmly, yeah. Across yeah. all possible histories. I hate, I hate temporal mechanics. <laughs> Time travel is one of those things that's specifically banned in this game as well. Good, yes. good. Good. Listen, if your time travel story does starts on chapter one with first beginning, you're doing it wrong. Right. Speaking from experience, my favorite one starts at chapter ten, second beginning. All right, that's that. And then I think the focus of this one is that orcs are cunning in war. Yep. All right, round to yeah. me for my third focus. And I'm going to go for adventurous. Oh, God, that eternal plague. Yep. So, because we, we said we wanted to, like, large than life heroes and. I think we we need to spend a bit of time dealing with what the adventurers have been doing. So I'm going to make a light event in the Rise and Fall. And it's the first adventuring party. I'm going to add a no that I should have added at the beginning. Uh, no mind slavers. No mind, mind control. control. If the lids, da ha ha, you thought I was yeah. your ally, but I've secretly been mind controlled by the enemy for all this time. I sense a bitter experience coming. I've abandoned five different series that I've gotten to book three on because they will not get off the, oh, he was secretly mind controlled trope. Mm. It gets old. Mm hmm. So yes, the first adventure parties begin, first heroes begin to delve into the dark places. How much loot do they come back with? Their lives. And these small clothes. Gaining fame. Fame, fortune, and incredible haircuts. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's important if you're a hero. I mean, unless you're an evil hero. So it's got us. For good hero's hair goes up, evil hero's hair goes down. Yeah. Ah, to be fair, what about there's bald heroes and there's bald villains? I feel this system might be slightly over deterministic. Yeah. We've got like this the first kind of growth of that kind of I mean, heroes delving deep has probably happened before, but this is the first time they start like the classic adventuring party becomes something that's been followed in the literature literature. Guys, you know if you bring a thief and a cleric, you actually get to come back alive? So this is it's kind of like the, the shift but from like a bunch of guys running together to go kill whatever's just come out of the crypt to, hey guys, we can make a living from this. It's that, it's that shifting point. All right, that's on to added. 
Okay. When was this, by the way, Gray? Sir? This is in Rise yeah. and Fall. This right. adventure, okay. adventurous... Basically adventurous, so oh, there it's it is. a good right. place to bring some heroes in. <laughs> okay, well, uh, I'm just going to, again, backfill something that happened. The city of Alexandria, kind of awkwardly put, I'm going to say was founded by a by a retired adventuring party uh, from, with uh, the remains of the lake elves that fled the desert of Silver Sands, and they formed a, a libertarian society where you could rise to the top by either buying a position or defeating the current member of the party council. Also, a good place to go delving into the god clothes through the jungles. See, the problem is now every, every time you say that, my mind automatically flashes to welcome to the jungle, but now I'm substituting gears with substituting the second line of we've got small clothes and gnomes, <laughs> which it doesn't quite ring true. Okay. Where are we at then? Add Alexa pop up. It's affecting adventurers. Okay. Feel like, given that the hero is going to be arriving at the world market, Adventurers Guild, we've said for the start of the final age, I f I'm going to fit a light event in at the start saying that the the Union has turned around and founded this Adventurers Guild in the first place to sort of act as an agent of theirs. You know, it's, okay, we could use these Adventurers to go scout for the world. We'll set up at the world markets to sort of act as a international resource, but one that answers to somewhere in our cities. Sort of, you know, trying to set it up and formalize it under their own control. Which also probably explains why the Adventurers would go to the world markets in the first place. It's neutral. It's, it's a universally neutral ground that is ran by the elves because they're insufferable for their being insufferable busy by this. sort of a veneer of uh, officialness yeah i mean it's it's word. closer to that given that the elves do currently run the world. it's not really going to be respected as neutral but it could be considered respectable it's respectable as it pays out yes it's institutionalized the elves, of course, are trying to take the heroic random guys and turn them into like something useful. Yeah. Commodity. Yeah, commodity, that's what I was looking for. But just hopefully they don't go into the hero the heroic futures market where every uh, where um dungeons are pre evaluated and uh and uh, with pri with uh, payout expectations, which they didn't sell as future contracts for the you know future what? I'm payout have to destroy Cathan a fifth time. Orconomics no is a good book, by the way. I do love Orconomics. It's a good book. Does that I mean, fall under grognarding? Really. Yes, it does. I'm not. I'm not making that okay. making that an official just thing. I was checking, just, I was uh, just I, I want to ban that, and I'm really hoping I don't, that that we don't. All yeah. right, we're going to. We're okay, you can go Orconomics. down there. You can. You can. You can go down and ban Orconomics. It's under grognarding. I don't have to. That is a fair point, actually. Yeah. I, I don't want to time snipe it. As my uh, my brother's group would say, but I, I think that that would fall under grognarding. Yes, the the I, whole adventuring futures. To be fair, isn't time sniping you know sort of what you have stuff like the MIB slash time bureaus for? You want to stop the time travelers, so you snipe them. Yes. Okay, Maybe. just checking. Time Sorry. sniping is. Oh wait, I forgot about this bonus that I had last round, and that guy should be dead before he can punch you in the face. Right. Okay. But yeah, over to Terran, then. That is your now event. I've done one. Oh, yes, uh, it, is, it is me, then. Um, shoot, I had an idea. Where did I write it down? Oh, yes. Uh, the Godstuff Recycloton was defended again, was uh, defended from the Golem of Godly Small Clothes by the gnome hero uh, Hercules. Yes, it starts with a silent G. And his human companion, Mark. <laughs> Hercules, yeah. Hercules. 
Damn it, I'm going to have to go and watch the Disney Hercules again later now. Yes, that's the guy. Only he's a gnome. Well, yeah. And I'm going to. So what you're saying is he's Danny DeVito's character, the little pan satyr thing. But now he's just a human who's short. That's all. So wait, what's the, what's the focus of this era again? So, you know, uh, adventurers. Heroes. Heroes. Adventurers. Take your damn heroes. I'm going to put this in the Croctopus Wars. That's when it happened. Uh huh. I should mm. probably copy that event first. It's clearly a light event, unless you happen to be the Golem of Godly Small Clothes, which survived. But he's probably very confused. It was it didn't actually win. No, no. No, you see, I think what happened, but I'm not going to write it down because I want, I, I want to leave it open for an event. I think what happened is that uh, Hercules picked it up and threw it into the ocean. Hmm. That's zero come from. That shouldn't be in there. Thanks, Hercules. Thanks, Mark. Recorded as saying he just came back into town to buy more torches. All right, this god. Hmm, so we're talking about great adventurers. Yep, great adventurers. What thing happened by an adventurer? And they're not a. Hmm. The witch, which is which? Which old witch? Hmm, I'm trying to think right now of where do I want to put a great of. Danger. You know what? Mr. McLitch up there has been very quiet, right? He has. What if... What if... And I'm going to steal this from an anime, so I know it's going to be a great idea. <laughs> there no is... Them. I'm not going to... No abandon yet, so I'm going to go and put a light event down over here in the Age of Gods of a golden-clad adventurer, a uh, mass golden-clad adventurer that travels the world with his retinue of golden clad of golden clad um servants you know uh, that they know that no one knows their their no one only knows their name and but no one's seen their face he's of an orcish build and he's been doing daring do's across the lands and the they reason why the, the lich lands are so quiet is because the lich isn't there he's actually going off to be an adventurer sounds good Anyone else? Hello? I have no questions yeah. on this. Yeah, no, sounds good. Remember, you're allowed to blow up Atlantis. You can basically do anything you want to, as long as you're not directly counter contradicting a later event. Sorry, I stepped away for a couple minutes. What's anime. blowing up? Um, Are we blowing based... up anime? That's yeah, anime. Anime. No. I vote no. <laughs> what, what's happening is, is that there is, um, the reason that we're back here in Age of Gods for, for a, for a uh, actual super adventure is that the, uh, that in the uh, there was a mysterious um, uh, orc with a golden mask that's going that that is that has gone around the world doing daring do with daring do's, and it's probably actually the lich who has been uh, who instead of running his lich la lich lands, the reason why the lich lands is so quiet is because the lich actually left for a long time ago and just being an adventurer. So hang on, hang on. Let me ju just to clarify: it's is it probably the lich or is it definitely the lich, but no one in the game world knows about it. It's most definitely the Lich. No one, uh, it, it's most probably the Lich. But I don't think, I don't, who knows? Honestly, I don't know. You can, we can work that out. It could be its own little mystery. No plot hooks. And basically, he just shows up throughout history, like solving issues, rescuing puppies, yeah. raising skeletons, causing doing, do, bas things. Do, basically doing both sides of the adventuring portfolio. Does he hang out with a guy called Skateboard Surfer? What? I summon a horde of skeletons! I ride a skateboard. They're a crime-fighting duo. <laughs> I feel Griff, like one guy got... My favorite web, BMX feel... Bandit, and Angel Summoner. I feel like one guy definitely got the better end of that power scale. Well, yes, uh -huh. that's the whole point, is that Angel Summoner is way better than BMX Bandit. 
Well, the thing is that it's been happening. This is the the, the gold, the mark of the golden mask has been around since time and immemorial to the present day from the age of gods. Mm-hmm. Right. So, I can imagine he, he's very bored. Most likely the lich man. Who knows? Right. So I'm coming to close this off. I'm going to create another light event in the rise and fall. Um, great. Can I stop you just for a second here, yep. discard? Mm -hmm. I asked a specific question. Is it actually the Lich? We can leave that to be open. Okay. It is not. Is it not known to be the Lich? Then it it might be. Got it. Yeah, it's it not, might that's be. I want to know. It is might it be definitely the Lich. The lich it might even be if the no Lich. No one in the world knows it, or is it maybe the Lich? Maybe not. It's maybe. Maybe. It's maybe, maybe like not. a maybe. It's yeah. saying that the two people with very similar aesthetics. Uh, are uh, are are traveling are of uh, similar aesthetics are doing things in two di entirely different places. Now I'm more confused than before. I ask the question. This is what I get for asking just card questions. I guess you'd think I'd learn. I will now, never now, now, now. Behave yourself. Learning is impossible. Well, I think the idea is is there's this guy in the mask, and sometimes it's a lich, but other times could be somebody else. I'm thinking, unless Discards explicitly says it one way or the other, it's unknown. Okay, yes, it's the Lich. It is okay, most definitely the Lich. That's no one else all knows, I wanted no to know. One, is it definitely the no Lich one, no? No one knows it's the Lich, because no the, God of the, the goddesses of the Orcus Empire cursed the Lich himself, so, the, so he probably snuck out one day. Cool. I'd forgotten that, if I ever knew it in the first place. Yeah, and that's, that's all I wanted to know, was, is it for sure the Lich? Because if it is for sure the Lich, we can't touch that. But if it might not be... Then we can. I mean, now I can't give him a twin brother who is also I mean, a lich. You can. <laughs> you can do. I mean, this is yeah. this is anything to do with the lich up in the north. Lich up in the north. I'm saying that he actually just the reason why the nor the lich lands have been so quiet is because the lich is never left a long time ago to. I just I be needed a crime to say it is all because otherwise it's left open. Fair enough. I'm very much for leaving things open, though, is my main thing for interpretation and so forth. This is why most of the stuff I've been doing is difficult stuff. Oh, close the door. You weren't born in a barn. It's getting cold here. I was actually born near a barn. So. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> another metaphor crashes to the ground. <laughs> this card destroys another. <laughs> hey, RKO from nowhere. All right. DKO, surely. I think it was a one punch. Anyways, Gray was closing this up. Yeah, I guess that was the Book of Heroes. In which the Empress and Law of the Harpy Empire marries a hero to her eldest daughter, cementing the idea that stagnant bloodlines could be supplemented with the blood of heroes. Getting around, the, getting around the whole inbreeding thing by save my realm. Congratulations. You know, you're now part oh. of the royalty. So you're saying that adoption to... is most definitely a a a uh, approved method here. I'm going to have to ask this question because otherwise someone is going to. Was it a harpy hero? Probably. Okay. okay. I mean, we, we've already established the harpies already uh, that uh, have been uh, have been done the cross species thing before. Was it the orcs? I can't remember. I don't no, think it was the Island of Man. It was the, uh, it it was was the, the, humans, uh, the not yes. 40k humans. Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm, it was I'm the dawn of the open. second decade of mankind. Also, I spelled daughter wrong. We know what you mean. It's not on the map, so it's it's allowed to correct the typo. If it's on the map, it's 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 set. I can't even spell daughter now. Oh. Spell check in Excel is, is ridiculously difficult anyway. Neat. I have a question. Was the Orc Lich in the, was the, Orc Lich in the North actually golden or what? I don't know. Uh, I think we definitely determined he was a Lich because he had the gold mines was the whole thing. The, he the started tower with... is, the golden, is named the Golden Lich, so... Oh, okay. He has a gold mine, yeah. Oh, that was, okay. Yeah, okay. that was how he set it up. As it was. Oh, okay, because I thought, like, for some reason the gold was definitely a part of his Lich thumb. It like, could be. It could like be. He, we've not explored that. So. Yeah, we haven't really. Yeah. We could do like a pass on that. Pass. I was honestly thinking it would be really cool to do a pass on the Golden Lich. Yeah. All right. What so what's so what's my, your legacy then? My legacy is the Blood of Heroes. Yeah, makes sense from what you just established with the. Cool. Yeah, the the idea that if you make it big enough, 
like marrying into yeah. nobles are on the lookout for great heroes to marry into their bloodline because at the end of the day having somebody who can fight off a hundred orcs is probably a good thing for your nation and it's an exit strategy for the adventurers as well there is actually a glorious end point you're probably not going to make it but it could happen if you're good yeah. well it's hell of a gold to aspire to and there was also my thing where you could just take over a town that yeah. too yes most yeah. people call that you know banditry but the dragon get half my kingdom and my daughter's hand in marriage mm. it, it just it more cements the idea that you know it is acceptable for extremely high land rulers just to marry to nobody just because they're good at skilling stuff they they have a they have a very definitive set of skills which is makes them makes them evidently marketable yeah right. on the one hand it solves the inbreeding problem on the other hand it introduces the psychopathy problem okay so added you up Oh, up, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah psycho psychopathy. Psychopathy. Yeah, I don't know how you pronounce it. Sociopathy. You, you, bring, sociopathy. you bring your murder hobo into your home. Yeah, there you go. That, that's the easier way of saying it. Hey now, hey, hey now, hey now. This is original D D D space. They're not murder hobos. They're they're uh what's the name? Dang it. They're kleptomaniacs. Gold no, 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 no. That, that's so. that's the elder scrolls, that is. No, 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 the, 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 it's XP is from gold, straight up. Yep. Oh, fair play. So, yes, you want to be stealing stuff. Mm -hmm. The more you steal, the more you take from a, a, um, a tomb or a dungeon, the more XP you're going to get. The less you fight, the, the, uh, the longer you live. The, the more you take, the stronger you are. Right, added. Oh, interspecies okay. relations, yeah. Well, uh... Yeah, so I'm just, I was thinking of a question, it's like, how how much can uh, interspecies marriage or interspecies breeding happen? So, I'm going to set the tone for that. In the godly commune is the, uh, the gods create the temple of union, where two, where any two people in the world can go, be married, and be able to have children. Uh, with and the children will always be one of the races of one of the parents. You can, you can right, so it's not a case. There's no, yeah, there's no half Sorry. Well, my yeah, no. god of family trees and genealogy approves of this. Okay, okay. His symbol is a tree fort. <laughs> there was me thinking you'd be a tree and a pair of secateurs. Well, okay, a, fam a family tree with, with, with houses in it, but close enough. One gets the idea. He is the gnomish king, god, king of the gnomish gods, so they're on board. All right. So, yeah, so there is a way of having well, having kids, but yeah, there is no half help, you need, half, you half need, heart piece and stuff like that, yeah. No, yeah, you, so, need okay. go, you need to go and get blessing from a specific, from a very specific oh, this, um this does this does give you a um a very interesting mm -hmm. thing where you could have like a kobold and an elf. And it's like, yeah, we're brothers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And uh notice I'm not putting a gender restriction on this. So nope, any two should. any two beans at all can be married and have children. Yeah. I like it. Um, oh, that's where, actually where me, is that? So I can just add that's, it to the map. So, but, yes, but, but, real quick question, though. So you're saying, but with this, it is needs you do need specifically go through this method here. This is the. It's a process, I think you say. This is yeah. the only thing where you have to be bound spiritually here, and so that you can actually produce, right? That's the question. Is this the, a singular chapel or are there multiple chapels? It makes more sense if it, this is just the first in some ways. Yeah, this is. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's just, yeah. Well, well, maybe you can clear, expand. But... Maybe someone expand in that for their event. Okay. Well, okay. Yeah. Hang on. Uh, where's we the first one? Then did we see? Scene. Hang on. We've got a lot of questions that are still being asked here. Yeah. Added. Sorry. Where did you say the first chapel was? It's somewhere in the in the the jungle of cast off god things. It, in the it was part of the godly commune, but they weren't exactly organized, so it's just spread out throughout that entire region. I don't want to name a specific place; you could just plop it down somewhere if you like. Yep. But it originated where all the gods were at. Good little temple thing I've not used. Okay. Oh, there's some nice little crypty ones down at the bottom. 
I mean, if you want a pre-established temple, the there is a temple to the god of genealogy in the medium-sized empire. Well, okay, it's in the Silver Sand Kingdom. Oh, why are they so big? A man has enough temples to spare, I suspect. He only has the one. Kobolds, kobolds exist on this planet, yes. Well, actually, yeah. <laughs> Fair point. That's a nice place for that. But I've put it quite inland, but not completely inaccessible. So it's a trek to reach well, it. But this this very much explains uh, something for the kobolds. I was very much wondering because you remember that uh, that that kobold palace that was destroyed. Uh, vaguely, was that the yeah. one that had the like the the waters tree. of life? No, that was that's the that's the that's a different one. The the one where there was a big was the big tree kobold uh, palace. Oh, the ruins of tree. Oh, yes. yes. Sorry, I'm that, with you. Yes, that was the original. That was the thing where the the leader got the leader of the thing. So I'm going to say when um if if I uh, hopefully I'm not um, is anyone going right now? I know you someone are jumping going. ahead of me. Yeah, uh, is, sorry, yeah. I was taking the opportunity for Terran to like talk about maps to start writing by. But on the subject right. of uh, interspecies relations, I'm gonna sort of infill something that happened during Mapper. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, the Union, uh, it used to be just the Elvish Republic and a bunch of Elizabethan tribes, but the Union was founded by acknowledging that both of them were essentially perfectly equal and that all species were just equal citizens. It didn't matter if you were a lizard folk or an elf. What I'm saying with the light event is, is that the charter of the Union was written in such a way that if you come and live in the Union, you are a Union citizen, whether or not you're a giant or a elf or a gnome or whatever you know sort of it's like um you know give me your oh, you're, what's the you're quote saying with the you, so you're saying the um so you're saying that that the elves adopted the the church they basically dropped a um a charter that is essentially the, alongside the uh the church of Un the union church the kind church of it's, union. it's more of a statement that if you are prepared to you know live in the union there's no racial prejudice you know you anybody oh, can be a part of the mean, Union mean systems elf. and union government. I mean, the you don't elf? have to be an elf. You don't have to be a lizard folk. You could be. Okay, a yeah. So you're saying you're saying the uh, the the for, for the elvish um own, the, the own elvish thing then. Yeah, like the union is trying to deliberately make sure it's not just all the lizard folks and all the elves. It's going if you want to come and live here, you can. It's I'm trying to remember what they put on the Statue of Liberty because it's a great snappy thing um, your, for an event title. You hold your thing. Your yeah, maybe you hold all to unwashed and stuff like that. Yes. That sort of thing. They're trying to deliberately set themselves up as we're not, you know, we'll take anyone. We're not going to be ra species or racist, you know. Yeah. Anyone could be a part of the show. Anyone That's who can, any, anyone who can work. Yeah. I got you. Is that the deal with the the, the interspecies? So is it is interspecies relationships? Species or? relationship is the lens currently. Yeah. So I was going for. I, I, sorry, it's nothing to do with the temple, but when that focus was brought up, I was like, that was a perfect opportunity to work in the forming of the fair union. Enough, so someone else can grab the temple. All right. Well, I'm just going to, uh, well, I'm, I'm not. Next. Uh, yeah, okay. Darren. You go ahead, Darren. Oh, sorry. Me. Um... <laughs> I don't mean the butt the ahead. I'm sorry. That's fine. Right. 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 We, we get it. We get it. Your ego is fine. Also, oh. Oh, well, that's interesting. Um, sorry, on a completely non-game related note, two wheels have just fallen off my chair. Oof. Uh, At the same time. I'm just, yeah, I'm just going to mute for a second and see if I could fix that. I'll be right back. Luck. Have fun. This is why I sit on a box. I have a standing desk. Hmm. I'm in a bath and everyone knows it. <laughs> You're a croctopus. I mean, you've yeah. got to keep moisturized, otherwise you'll dry out and become a croc. I was about, I was about to say, okay, roast beer. Oh, not roast beer. Who was the guy Alibus? from the French? From the French? Who was that French guy? Who was the bath guy? I don't know. I don't know. You know well. All right. So yes, Terran, what are you adding? All right. So I think the reason why the desert gnomes conquered the temple to Bomrock is that they were somewhat opposed to all these foreigners coming to the temple of Bomrock, because Bomrock, of course, completely approved of this, and extended the blessing to his temple as well. So, this is why the desert gnomes, and this will be a dark event, because it was bad for the gnomish empire as a whole, 
in how oh, when was that again where's my chart i think that was the last thing no that was 2240 so somewhere around the uh outer alliance i'll stick it in the orcish empire just after the rise and fall yeah that sounds right that named Just typing. Uh, what was that? Where is it? Some good ideas. What's going on there? Mm -hmm. I have a, I have a thing for cobalt. Yeah, we so. know. <laughs> yes. I, yes. Yes. Oh, uh, when was the? It was the uh, growing empires, right? The Voti has two E's, right? Probably. Uh, who else did they? Have? Wouldn't be peasants. No one ever does anything with the peasants. Are you kidding? I've got the second god is for the, pe the gnomish pantheon is peasant is for the peasants. Got to eat, right? Especially when you don't have any designated farming communities. Yes. Very important to eat. Yes, of course. You eat the peasants. Although, honestly, in gnomish, the word peasant is synonymous with the word fisherman. They have no idea why these. All these other peasants don't own boats. It's confusing. All right. So who is what you think having to finish writing? Okay. Up? Uh, I think better when I'm typing anyways. So, um, displeased by the influx of foreigners to the Temple of Bomb Rock after the temple extends the blessing from the Chapel of Union, the Desert Gnomes conquer the temple and forbid entry to any who is not a devotee to Bomb Rock, Ustor, or Bomlokum, the three gods who are most favored by the, uh, the, San the, uh, the Desert Gnomes. That's, um, family genealogy, uh, peaceful sleep, and hearth and home. In order. So However, Egom Egom, the uh, god of nature and natural things, nature and gesturing, really likes to get people snuck in under their under their eye. So people are still able to go there. They just have to leave an offering to uh, to Egom Egom. This, of course, makes Bomb Rock mildly displeased. Your your gods are very weird and uh, and yes, yes, they are esoteric, and I love it. Thank you. This is uh, have you from... seen Greece, Rome, Norse? Also, this is coming from the cobalts. <laughs> good, good. Oh, what was that? Ah, oh, yes, I I got this great book for uh, for a gift a while ago called Zeus Grants Stupid Wishes. It is a tongue in cheek history of the gods of the of Earth. Many of them. Not all of them. It's only about two inches thick. Mm -hmm. All right. So was it in Rise and Fall or the Orcish? Was it Rise and Fall or Growing Empires where the uh, where the For palace sure. was created? I think I need to move that closer to Growing Empires. You're right. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Um, Done. 
Otherwise, it's, ha not, it's happening too far away from the Union. Growing empires, I think the palace was established. I think it fell in rise and fall. All right, then we're going to go over here for then in the um, growing empires. Um, I'm going to take a light event because its fall is in the dark is in the dark event, the future dark event. And I'm going to explain the establishment of the palace. Um, so. Uh... Oh, that's why it happened, right? Mm hmm. Um. Union. Um, so uh, to assuage the city's lon uh, so to assuage the city's loneliness, a uh, the first cobalt king or first cobalt leader um, married this uh, entered into union with the city and w uh, took their child up the up to the top of big uh, top of big uh, of the big tree. Discard had a cobalt marry a city. Yes. And then that city, and then that unfortunate city was destroyed by a, by on top of the tree. So, you know, it's a dead kid. So it, it's an unfortunate circumstance. Well, I mean, you know. We're getting kind of La Mulana in here. I yeah. sure hope so. Okay, there. I've I've updated the uh, the thing on account of the temple being destroyed immediately following the alliance with the harpies. Check. Seriously, spell check. Desert Gnome leader is worth quoted as saying, it's not that we mind what you're doing, it's just that we mind where you're doing it. All right, so as far as the city's loneliness, a charismatic kobold entered into union with the first city and took their child to the top of the big tree so its mother could look upon it. Nice. Sorry about that. Hi, Hi, I yeah. miss much. Discard just oh, married a kobold in a tree. A uh, city. A tree. A tree city. No, it, uh, so the a kobold, so a charismatic kobold in, in capital letters um, entered into union with the first city and took their child to the top of the big tree so the city could look upon it, look upon its, uh, their, um, its children, its child. Oh, okay. What's the name of that tree city again? First city? No, oh, no, the first city is the first city. Um, okay. that city is the, was the, was big the tree. palace where it was very young before the, before what happened to it happened to it. So the very, the first city is very sad because its child, because its child, uh, basically died in front of it. Is in a deep depression. No one's a depressed tree. Well, it's just a weeping willow in that case, isn't it? The tree is not the city. The tree is a different city. Yes, it was a different city. If anything, Bomb Rock is interested in the tree, on account of it is his symbol. My name, that's what I was doing. A civil, it was basically, it's a civil union. Okay. It's a dark event because of the pun. No, it's a great event because this is the city. Uh... Say, it's not a dark event. That's a nice event. <laughs> yes, it is. But it's a dark event because of the pun. Oh, come now. This entire thing is Solely pun. because of the pun. Only the pun. Yeah, to be <laughs> fair, if you do that, you basically blacklist half of the events I've titled. So let's not... Well, you're not wrong. <laughs> let's not criminalize bad puns in event titles. Otherwise, we're going to be here all night. <laughs> I'm going, to, I'm going to pun jail, officer. All right, does it mean that? I believe you mean the pungent. Hey. And um, let me see if that was Terran. No, it was Discord, wasn't oh, it? So, yes, it is. It is great. All yeah. right, so Sorry, I'm going to add in a nice little sort of light event in Growing Empires, which will be the thread of the Union. Church of the Union. 
I think is it is it a church or is it a ritual it's type deal? Uh, Union temples, then. Got it. Yeah, Union temples, shrines, shrines. It's chapels. Shrines of Union. Chapels. Already see people getting the wrong idea. I can also see that the elves basically curved the name from Union so to, to make their yeah. Union so it would confuse people. <laughs> dare. How dare. Violent slum. Just people get much easier access to them. I understand. The, the, the thing about the elves is that you know how most people just don't like elves in, in fantasy? Yeah. I, I like the fact that they don't like elves. Video. I like don't like they don't like elves in this one because they're freaking nosy busybodies, <laughs> or un completely untrustworthy. Take your pick. They're, they're, they're the complete opposite of like Lord of the Rings elves, who can yeah they won't stay out of other businesses. Yeah, the they're, nosy part I'll accept. Yeah, <laughs> we're trying to do good things. It's just we are insistent on the way we do it our way. I just realized that the term "washed up" now it has the same meaning in this un in this planet as the term "shifty eyed." Mm -hmm. Looking at you, Lake Elves. No one trusts you. Just as I intended. I was going to say, don't look at me about the Lake Elves. They were never my creation. Oh, no, I made them. Yeah. I, I accept full responsibility for Lake Elves. Yeah. I knew what I was doing. Gotta have somebody who's untrustworthy, and I, the Elves can take it. Oh. Right. So it's back around to add it, I think. Okay, well, I'm going to add an adventure hook and like, just cast a little shadow on this, uh, in this lovely ecumenical attitude and say, recently in the last age, there has been social movement to restrict access to the right of union to only the wealthy. I see. The nobility has taken, has, uh, ta has, uh, taken full hold of it. This is how they induct, arrived, eh? induct adventures into their groups. Uh, yeah, the, I think he said get the chopsticks. What? Sorry, get the. What? <laughs> I meant to say get the. I meant to say get the chopping axes, boys. But for some reason, I said chopsticks. Guillotine. Sorry. Get the guillotine. Sorry. Yeah, that'd do. Not chopsticks. Oh, I don't know. My brain's failing. Help. Full axe chopstick. What's the? I'd love to know really? what horrible thing you could do to with chopsticks. I mean, to be fair, if you shove no, them hard up the nose, <laughs> yeah, probably quite a lot. I would like to thank Gray for giving me my next round of flashbacks to wars I was never in. It started as a joke. Why is it still going on? An excellent question only you can answer. I wish I Answers could. on the back of a postcard. Okay. I'll leave that. I'll leave that as kind of an adventure hook. And uh, like what I took from this is like. The desire for unity. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, no, how about this? Love finds a way. Let him pick his own focus, Discord. Fair enough, yeah. fair enough, fair enough. Okay, that's done for me. All right, Serpentis. All right, we need a focus. All right, I'm sorry, I'm just going to quickly gin over what we've got so far. We haven't heard from actually speaking of things we haven't heard from from a while. Mm -hmm. We haven't heard from our lovely friends of the kobolds, the demons, in a while. The de uh, demons on the march. Yeah, so I'm the thinking. Balls. Sorry, what did I say? Did I say kobolds? Or did I say gnomes? I meant kobolds. No, oh, so, yes. so, the, so the demons are the kobolds and the kobolds and the harpy lands. Because do you remember? We do remember. Well, there are demons also in the harpy lands. They're from. Yes, they were, weren't they? They're yes. supposedly. They're also supposedly from the cast aside corpse of uh, of the harpy's queen's the god the god of the harpy sister. In that case, open season all demons. We're just going. I'm just saying demons are on the march generally. Then I'd okay. forgotten about the harpy ones. We can make that work. And I'm going to fit in. And a... there's also. 
And also remember, there's also the Inverted Pits um, Defiance of Heaven, which is a major demon city that travels the world. I, all of Discard cities can walk. Yes, but some are a little better at it than others. In hindsight, this will become known as the mistake. <laughs> you should not teach your cities to walk. I mean, to be fair, when it comes to sentient demonic architecture, I don't think it's a matter of teaching them shit. I think they just have that as a thing. Well, I mean, um, I mean, the demonic city can walk because it's a natural. It's not a natural city. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, no one's going to look at a sentient demonic city and think, man, that's the norm. Um, speaking of the inverted pit, for my actual first event, mm -hmm. I'm going to say that during the Croctopus Wars, the inverted pit to invent another hook for us to work with later. Mm -hmm. Sort of, it, in the chaos of the Croctopus Wars, it's known to have travelled somewhere in the sort of ten years or so that it took the wars to settle. No one's actually sure where it went during that time or what it was up to. All we know is that it came back towards the end of the wars looking rather sort of happy with itself. And no one summoned up the courage yet to ask it. So... Mm -hmm. The sort of wanderings of the inverted pit, if you will. Mm -hmm. I do, I do like the fact that it's the inverted pit. It's not the spire. It's, it's the inverted pits. I spell croctopus, though. Okay, so I don't word. Got answer. Right. Okay. Pass it on, because I'm just going to write mine up. All right, so Zevron's... Does everyone sound here, so that goes to me? Um, Tavern's next. Okay, Taren. Yeah, I think. We, we swapped to, just to, uh, seven Tavern. Oh, yeah. right, here we go. Yeah, no, it's over here in turn order. We're up to step five, okay. Go to turn order, yeah. All right, so we're focusing on demons. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see. I think I want to do something with the demons and the kobolds. Let me look at Could we really, really say, besides the fact that I have asked Great to flavor them very Egyptian y, like what makes a demon a demon is a question, too. Oh, they're Egyptian demons. Yeah, like when you say, when you say Egyptian flavor, do you mean like sort of the old animal head sort of. Yeah, it's something like mostly that. Mostly human. Mostly or is it animal, animal head, head and mostly kobold? The animal head, mostly whatever race, he, uh, whatever race is apart for the cobalt for that one right there. Like honestly, the demon is honestly. I'm thinking it, it's kind of nebulous a term and uh, for thinking. Like I guess the one don't want to pigeonhole Gray from making what de whatever what demons he wants. It's basically like malicious spirits and so forth. Okay, fair enough. The the demons are very much. Um, Had a, uh, basically very much make what you will of make what you want them to look like. You know what I mean? Yeah, certainly will. I mean, uh, what it could be that all the demons are maybe mimics, is since they all get got together and made a giant walking city. It could yeah, just be very like malicious, elves. maybe very malicious nice. architecture. Like you have a you like they're like mimics and so forth. I think even by the standards of the lake elves, that would be kind of impressive if they'd somehow managed to hoodwink the entire universe for literal centuries. Age of Piracy needs more dark events. True. Mm -hmm. So clearly, the demons have offered their services as advisors and henchmen to the pirates as a oh. free service. In exchange for transport around the world. Oh dear. You know, that kind of an idea, I'm still having that kind of idea that demons are like on the level and scale of, of mimics and just a uh, malicious uh, mo uh, moving architecture. So you can li literally get attacked by a gazebo uh, from uh, that was just sitting there the entire time. Shit, I forgot to roll to attack the gazebo. Greg, can I roll initiative against the gazebo? Too late, this you can only roll to attack. Wrong. Shit! Right, discard. I'm changing my event because of that. <laughs> so, demonic ships. How's that? <laughs> no, I think I think the mimic thing may have inspired him by the sounds of it. Let's have a look. 
was coming. Just an entire race of very angry furniture. I mean, to be fair, if you know, if all the Dark Souls likes have told us anything, mm -hmm. fucking anything could be. What was the name of that game where the coffee mugs were known to be like the black alien goop? Prey. If Prey right. has told us anything, right, sentient so shapeshifters are a legit menace. The demons, having mastered the arts of shapeshifting, have begun replacing parts of pirate ships to both spread themselves across the world unobtrusively, and also to increase the uh, chaos around by giving the pirates ships that are both stronger in hull, hit harder in cannon or whatever they use for weapons, and can heal themselves because, well, they're that board, that's a demon now. That, that, uh, that blank place where there used to be a board, uh, it's full of demons. You're, you're not sinking anymore. Have fun. <laughs> the sail just dodged a cannonball, just dodged fire arrows. That's normal. When you're pirates. Hmm. Oh, she just got? I'm trying to think. Demons on the march. Demons, demons on the march? On or the like march. demons on sale? Hmm. I'm trying Half to think off. right now. Because this is, this is kind of forcing me to think of what are actually the kobold de demons of the kobolds. You just told me they're malevolent shapeshifter mimics. Yeah, sure enough, they're malevolent shapeshifter mimics. They can basically become any architecture or something like that, so... That finally kills off my plotline. What plotline was that? I'm sorry, Craig. Oh, I was going to use mimics as, like, the big bad. But it's been, it's been <laughs> Why did I kill it off? They're, they're already demons. You just had yeah, to not say that. It was, it was going to be like a, you've never seen mimics before in your life thing, but it's fine. Most people haven't. Well... Most people think they haven't. They're Most mimics. people think they have it. That there's a thing where <laughs> to be honest, I've been the... drifting away from it as we go. That's mm -hmm. fair. Yeah. Someday I want to do my we've giant kind of like evolved a different world. I've got lots of other things I wanted to. Yeah. Oh, there are always mm -hmm. other things. Yeah. Remember, mm -hmm. in, in in original D and D, the fun follows the players, not the other way around. Yeah, that's why I've, that's why I pretty much decided to abandon it anyway. You want to start a trade empire? I can work with that. What I want to say about demons on the march. I want to start a clown troop that also exercises de uh, uh, evil ghosts. All right, let's say okay. over here in Zombie ghosts, please leave this place. Not the Orcish Empire during the time of the Orcish Empires. Anyone hears a ghost, he better leave because we're about to bring out the pun. And I'm going to make this about the demonic harpies. So it's a dark event during the time of the Orcish Empire. Harpies were distinct, legally distinct from the other demons. Yeah, no, this, yeah, this is the fact that um, these are this is a different kind of demon, and because these right, these demons here are, are parts of are a are created from the entrails of a uh, of a of a dead god of a, of a mm -hmm. slain god, mm -hmm. and so they have their own attempt. They're trying to basically stick to resurrect their resurrect their mother or their their dead their dead mother. So. Uh, let's see. I don't know what to call it, but I had an idea. It's gone. The only one way to solve this. Uh, I'm gonna go over here for the demonic harpies. What what's what um what isle of the three oh sorry of the three idol of the six isles? All right, so Horus Vex. 
It is said that observed that by uh, via the harpies that, of three brothers that the demonic harpies have been making expeditions to find parts of their dead progenitor of the dead progenitor god. All right. Yep, that's fine. How's that? Okay. And from discard, it pops around to me. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna put something in to. Octopus Force around the plundering of the world market. So I'm actually going to move the um, keep them together. I'm just going to move these two down because this happens at the same time. I'm going to say that during the um, and release the imps. So during the uh, attack on um, the world market, the pirates leave, like, let loose demonic imps to try and distract the defenders. And those are still infesting the city. Uh, when, you have, when you have malicious road bricks yeah. that can also get up and want run around. Damned will imps. Gremlins and so forth. Gremlins is probably a good better name, yeah. And they, they're, they're hard to exterminate. Oh yeah, they break quickly down in the dark. Yep. So they, they're, they're still trying, I think where we're at, they're still trying to clean up the world markets after this raid, so. Right. That's me done. Okay. What have we got then? Added. Added. Okay. Over towards the end of the timeline, the sundering of the three suns. From the time loop chat, chat empire, when it reemerges into the world, outstrikes the the demon hero adventurer Trites, wearing a necklace of bones, saying that he and he alone has discovered a way to truly slay demons. Ooh. Ah, oh, some sort of demon slayer. What is a useful person to that? Is he really? That depends if you're a demon or not. Hmm. Oh no, I mean a demon slayer. Ah. Uh -huh. Oh, he's, he's claiming he is. Then that if they weren't. Yeah, it'd be a ridiculous thing to claim. You just get yourself in trouble. Least the gremlins. All right. So back to me then for a final event. Uh. Where's that map? He says for the fifth time tonight. Yeah, Somewhere all right. Look, I keep night. closing it by accident. Okay. <laughs> I've got too many windows open. I know that feeling. Yeah. 142. I'm surprised your system hasn't collapsed. I use Foldy as a browser. That's still a hell of a lot of windows. Yes. That's why okay. I use Vivaldi as a browser. Uh huh. And it's only running at around nine RAM, nine gigs of RAM. That's not too bad. Total. That's everything, not just Vivaldi. All right. Well, what I'm going to do then is uh, say that the winged demons on the sort of brother island that isn't part of the Horizon Empire are known to be getting organized and hungry, and they've been spotted sort of trying to move through the Pyrite Hills towards the rebuilt bastion. So there's sort of just rising tensions in that part of the world as the demons are organizing. Uh, 
It's a terrible title, but I'll come back and fix that in a minute. And as for the legend of the focus, I'm going to say we've seen a lot of demonic infiltration. And I like the whole mimic idea we've been developing. So I'm going to say... Yeah. Yeah. Where'd you put it? There, where you least expect. Because of their sort of mimicry and ability to just sort of get around into places. Right, I've got an event to write up. That is the focus done. All right. All right, seven. What would your focus be? Stood demons. No, nope, no, it's a new one. You're, you're the lens again. I know. That's what I'm thinking. Tempted to look at the halflings. Oh, yeah. We haven't touched them at all, as far as I can tell. They just kind of exist next to the orcs. They got, got, they got conquered by the orcs at the end of um, Upper Imperium. Mm -hmm. They're just kind of there, you know? Yeah. Growing apparently 50 hexes worth of wheat. That's, that's a lot of wheat. Red basket of the world. Pretty much. Considering the lack of farming communities anywhere else. Well, Mother Island actually has a lot of farming communities. Gray just left those out. They're, they're not, they weren't in Mappa, so they're not in Empire scale. They were. I drew they them were? in. Oh, oh, yeah. No, no. I'll let them in now. They just got left out, huh? Yeah, that's my fault. Okay, on the opposite end of the map. As far away from them as you can get, except the map's a donut, so they're actually next door. Hmm. No, you know what we really need? We, we need a lens on famous pirates. Uh, okay. In fact, I want to say, can I restrict this to be Age of Piracy and later? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes preference sense. Preference for pirates who will somehow still be alive during the adventuring times? You know, unless, of course, we, we kill off a pirate during the, uh, during, the lens, during the focus. Yeah, sure, but okay. I have another excuse to include more One Piece references. <laughs> There's always a good time for more One Piece references, if, if One Piece can be uh, used as a benchmark. It's, what, 700 episode, episodes? Almost up to 1,000 now. Oh, 1,000. But dang. Yeah, they just I passed the 1,000th chapter of the manga. I guess it's time to crack open the mangas again, then. I got tired of waiting for the animes to uh, finish each episode. All right, so I think I am going to create a, an event in the Age of Piracy. It is going to be a light event to counteract my previous dark event there. We'll call it the Skeleton Pirate Stream. Is ship the live stream. Travels the seven seas. Disdain for going cannons, he uses catapults to catapult his skeletal and zombie minions onto enemy vessels. 
drop their anchor and furl their sails, and then forces them to taste test his latest cooking. I was about to say, how was this a lie to them? Anyone Isn't who it? survives is free to go. Their treasure is unharmed. However, he will sample any unique spices you have. But they just fall right, uh, right out of his body because he is a skeleton. Gordon, skeleton Gordon Ramsay. No vampires, of course, because running water. All right. The reason this is a light event is because, well, no, hardly anyone ever dies from eating his cooking. Well, that's what he'd say, of course. <laughs> hardly any, compared to a normal pirate attack, hardly anyone ever dies. As opposed to everyone dies who isn't worth money. All right. So oh, that'll be discard next. Uh, for for Zen, this is pirates. Pirates. All right. Pirates. Piracy. Hmm. During the age of piracy, right? Or later. Or later. Well then. I know what I want to do. I'm going over to the Orcish Empire. And I am making a... I don't know if it's a light event or dark event. Go for a dark event. Um, and it's going to be... Uh, I think I messed the thing up. Well, this will this will be an event. We can see if it's light or dark in the, in the moment, but it is uh, Orc uh, Orcisius returns. Oh yeah. May have just given a link to someone to the stream. Or he returns. Uh, what was the thing? Um, rumors of his death being very exaggerated. Orc CS. Oh, I don't know. What was the what was the naming? What was the spelling we uh what do you called it on agreed upon gray? Um Orc dash SS Orc apostrophe S S Y U S. Y U S, okay. Okay, there we go. Orc Sisius. Um Return to found his way back to home to his home waters, where he resumed pillaging very happily. Resumed pillaging the orc him. Orcish Empire, he had big lanes. Yeah. Well, but his true, though he has forgotten about his treasures amassed during his voyage. He's come back, but he doesn't remember anywhere he let were anywhere he left any of the things he had that during his travels. Right. Back to me. Pirates. Um. Oh. Is that a pirate band that's done absolutely bugger all? Yes, the Star Chaser Pirates, Orc and the, Arch the Archipelagos. Archipelagos. What shall I do with them? 
And considering the fact that between the Age of Pirates and this has been, what, like 60 years, it's kind of weird that he's actually returned. Yeah. So who knows? Could this just be a Dread Pirate Rob scenario? I'm going to put what, a dark event the Age of Pirates. Dark Chase of Fleet. Maybe we should have made some kobold pirates, who knows? Don't forget, anytime after the Age of Pirates, there are airships. Yeah. Oh, oh, God. Yeah. Yes. I actually moved them forward one. I had forgotten about Earth. the airships for a second. Yeah, well, they're called Star Chasers. Makes great sense that they, yeah, um, formed the first airship pirates fleet. Begins to raid the ship planes. Yeah, go the air pirates. All right, that's me done. Added. Please invent airships to get away from pirates. Pirates steal airships to get at harpies. Oh shit! <laughs> and now they've got better ones that can be manned with that can hold cargo. Oh no! Can't afford um gap. Yeah. Okay, so another pirate group sets out. During the time of the Outer Alliance, Argus, the left eye, leaves Terra Incognita and forms a crew who all cover their left eyes in respect. Uh, he wanders the seas, uh, seeking to, to, marry, to marry and have children with the strongest people in the world so that he could join them to his crew. Is this a giant that's left, that's left and he's done all this? Yep. Huh. As a pirate, does he have a normal pirate ship or is it somehow different because he's a giant? I don't know. Probably just okay. a very big ship. Sentry. All right, Sabantis. Okay. Let's see. I have to look that up. Yeah, I feel like. I feel like we're owed a more conventional kind of pirate earlier on. When did Added's Lizardman disappear again? Rise and fall. I think I've written that down. Rise and fall, yeah, so it's a little... Uh, I could move that forward. Okay. You wanna, do you want a Lizardman pirate? Nope. Oh. Nope. Didn't write that down. There we go. I'm just breaking everything in the background. Don't mind me, honest governor. What I'm going to say then is sort of in the aftermath of the uh, disappearance of added Lizardman, there will be one who sort of comes back with a fleet and sort of the remains of... Actually, no, that doesn't make any sense. He said they went disappeared. Nope, scratch that. Um... um. Like the the main city disappeared. There's still a, some around. Some of them went feral and live in the wilds, and some of them joined with the elves. We're we're not having a Dwemer scenario, not a Dwemer, but a uh, Dunvar scenario, whatever it is, where the where they accidentally made God and were disappeared. Yeah, they didn't get Thanos snapped. It's just a, the largest group of them just burrowed into the world and disappeared. They'll be back. Don't worry about it. Just remember the now... secret words from that amazing book by the guy who wrote Conan. Uh, these books were written in a certain time period and need to be sort of, you know, very carefully read today. Okay. 
Okay, now I'll tell you what we're going to do. Uh, I tried reading the current on a few weeks ago, months ago. I haven't she, aged well. She definitely burst his booby across the room. <laughs> it is a bit, yeah. Yeah, oh, with the best world of all. Not the actual Conan stories. I can't remember which one this was. I think it was Cull. Like with the best world of the world, you know that Conan game that came out a couple of years back, the one that was sort of building on the survival craze. Yeah, uh, Conan Excels, Yeah, yeah. You could definitely tell the people who made that game were lovers of the books, because it's just like, okay, yeah, that's just boob and cock all the way over the character creation screen. All right. Just oh, yep, I played that game for a bit. Yeah, never have. I made my base next to a crocodile and then kept eating. That's what happens to Conan Exiles. A very badly trained crocodile, can I just say? Well, I'd kill it. Uh, it would sneak into my house at night and eat. <laughs> Did you not lock your door? He just got in. <laughs> it just gets in. I think I was in the spawn range. Okay. <laughs> it would just appear in the house. I mean, that's kind of impressive in a way. It's a very persistent crocodile. Um, sorry, <laughs> on, back on topic. Yeah, well, I kind of like the idea that after the Star Chaser fleet goes to the skies in terms of becoming the first airship pirates, there would still be a clique of experienced pirates from his band who go, no, we're going to sail the seas again, but we'll take, you know, we've been sailing with them for long enough, we know what we're doing. So it's sort of like a you have the Star Chasers above, and I haven't quite thought of the right name yet. I'm hewing towards Blood Leaves being elfy, but below, sort of becoming known as Terrors of the Sea Traders. Would the name have something to do with um, why they left? Yes. Well, that's kind of what I'm angling for. Perhaps some kind of failed coup scenario? Mm. Tried to take down Bar Stair, ch uh, stair Chaser? Sorry, he's not chasing stairs, he's chasing stars. Yeah. It could be worse. It could be pirate aircraft carriers. You joke, but if this setting goes on long enough, I could absolutely <laughs> imagine there being a large what, enough one airship. Man airship one single-seater airships being launched from boats? Ah, uh, perish the thought. Yeah, or the other version where you've got a giant airship in the sky and like little um, sort of hooks on the side to hang harpies with wing, you know, sort of wingsuits on. Just sort of off and away they go. Strange visuals of ace combat monsters aside. Uh, yeah, so I'm thinking like a sort of splinter faction of sea-based pirates sort of break off from the star chasers but start uh, attacking the sea lanes. And I'm thinking blood hand for a name? He lost a hand as a result of the coup? Failing, I mean. So he was punished and sent away, but he had enough loyalists to sort of found a pirate fleet. Renowned for his cruelty. Particularly, in fact, he now cuts off other people's hands to avenge his own lost hand, and he hates the Star Chasers. Okay, yeah, we can make that work. At least he doesn't steal their hands. That would be disturbing. And cool. I mean, to be fair, he's now absolutely doing it. You're welcome. Thanks for the tip. <laughs> Obviously, that's why he has to keep getting more new ones, because they die. Well, keep or attaching he the hands one. to be stumped, but it's not working. Remember, cleric magic exists. So he has a curse, I'm sure, that makes sure he can't uh, get his thumb back. Yeah, he can't just say, have a healer treat the hand. Right. Obviously, Star Chaser did easy. something. What can be your interpretation? But did something where the hand no longer properly can be reattached. Mm -hmm. Maybe a magic sword? Possibly, possibly. One of those old-fashioned wounds from this weapon do not heal naturally. Those are always fun. I spent about two weeks researching magic swords from history. They were less than I expected. Right. Time-wise. We're trying to get this card done. I think this is the last one. If we get yours done, okay, then that is actually true. Uh, yes, we can. If we do discard, all right. We have, I still yeah, have well, a second oh, one, yes. one for my focus, don't I? And then yes, I need a legacy. He's right. Yes, you do. But yeah. I already know what my legacy is going to be, and I know what my event's going to be. So, 
we never established what got the croctopus all up and doing Angry. things, right? No, I think we just established that they've always existed and then just sort of rose up from waves and took over uh, fair winds after the orcs moved. In. I mean, we established that the triangle was always a known weird area. Okay, so turns out what actually happened, and this may have occurred a while ago, earlier, but Bar Star Chaser found one of the artifacts he was looking for, the Crown of Deathless Elizabeth, a powerful magical artifact that grants its holder and all of his holder's allies immunity to the effects of time, that being age, so long as he has sufficient fame to counteract the accumulated time. This, of course, made the Croctopi very angry. Okay. And this is why Bar Star Chaser is a pain in the ass. We could have done without Croctopi Star Chaser. What are you doing? Living forever! Instead of Star Chaser, we can call him Bar Chaser. <laughs> Problem causer. No, no, just call him Bar Star Farts. He hates that. Go for the Vermintide route. Burbles for you, hail skirt. All right, so in that case, if that's Terran's event and focus... Yep. We'll go into Discord. All right, mine is Rumor and Portents. Yeah, good one to end up on. All right, and I'm going to start that with... In the, mo the modern times, which is... Uh, honestly, we should just put... The, instead of having the surviving the Crocopus attack, the Heroes Ride the World Market Adventures go, it should be modern time, just modern. Yeah, because it's, uh, it's basically current like age. Yeah, current, current age. age. So um, mine's going to be a dark event because it is because I want to go on about um up in the what is it where are these places what is this place again for the great wastes this um where's the like the last elven where's the last elvish um like settlement before the great waste would you say um uh, uh sprentus uh, probably if you look at sort of the great waste there's shellia which uh, yeah it's like in the great wastes but it was very much an outpost they founded as sort of like an entry mm, okay so particularly to help the sand elves who then got their heads kicked in by pretty much everyone or sand elves so all right so um there's the problem hang on has the embargo those um those pass that's the embargo um from the observation posts of shelia yeah, Shellair, or is he? It's is, Crocus is, Wars. There was a formatting error. Oh, so that's oh, it's a she liar. It's Shellair. I put it in the Discord chat. It's with the slightly clearer. If it helps, S H E L I A R. Yeah, it, uh, S H E L I A R, which is if you look at it one way, it's literally just she liar put together. Oh, yes. Honestly, um, I need to set the legacy of famous pirates era. Hmm? Yes, what you was did. That a, what was that, uh, Zebrantis? I was like, yeah, it was honestly just a corruption of shelter originally, but yeah, now I, I see it. There we go. Okay. The um, legacy is, of course, legends never die. All right. Get out of here, Blizzard. Pocket no. vision from shelter. Blizzard. No. Blizzard. Blizzard. The game company, man. No. Okay. I spell those again. Soul Calibur. Yeah. Uh, how do you spell what? Sorry, this guy. How um ha uh how do you spell those? T h o e s. No. T h o s e. -S -E. You're right. What? O s e. Thank you, dyslexia. Yeah. Right. Oh, sorry. Okay. Very confused there for a second. Yes, it's, it's T h o s e. But you know. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. 
maybe we probably should do that thing. All right, here we go. Uh, from our, from the observation posts of Shelia, those who ventured into the into the Great Ways have been seen wandering the wastes, and the survivors spe uh, survivors speak of insects infesting corpses of the fallen, to puffing them around like uh, as men. <laughs> well, thank you. I wasn't going to need to try and sleep tonight. I mean, that was just, I just found that image. I'm like, man, that looks rad. Of oh, that mummified guy with the mask. Oh, I know the one you mean. I'm just saying. All right. Anyone uh, else that's got... not how you spell insects. Oh, leave it. <laughs> we, could <do> a spell... <laughs> we could do a spell check run later. Let's not worry about it now. But for oh, now. I, I will remind you again of the discard rule. The, the discard rule. No. Or you said on the it, map. That's not on the map. If it touches the map, it's canonical. It hasn't touched the map yet. Let's also, keep that off would... the map. Thank you. Anyway, sorry. Now that discard's gone, it's grey, I believe. Yep. Give us some four tenths. Mm -hmm. I would say... Try and keep it to the modern times, but we can yeah. have like some ancient rumors or legends. Maybe rumors, pointers, and legends. How's that? I'm gonna add one for the modern times. It's dark. We both edited it at the same time. Yeah. I think that's portents. I'm gonna add. Castro does not sleep easy, does not die, rest easy. Isn't that Babylon 5 series t season 3? What are we talking about here? So, there are rumors that a duke no, it is a, a member of the Odead. Season 1, science of importance. The bastard. Trapped in his tomb. Get the concrete! Pour <laughs> it on! Actually, now I'm going to take the undead to a vampire. Make it more, more explicit. Not mentioned vampires yet. There's a vampire tra uh, tra trapped here too. This is why we can't have nice things. Maybe vampires. Okay. For mine, it's going to be champions. Each god is interviewing members of a specific race, asking who is the strongest. Let's, let's hopefully it's something to do with Ragnarok, all right? I need to watch that. Now you know what we're talking about. I'm talking about that, okay. Well, yeah, it was a great Thor movie. Oh, that's all right, 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 right. <laughs> I know what you actually mean. Okay. Okay, next. I think that is Mantis. Yay! Let's have a light event. Let us go to the end of the Sundering of Three Suns. And I'm going to say 
actually would this be more light or dark i was going to go for like a sign from the goddesses of the orcs sort of going that there will be one day again an orcish empire but kind of not on on their terms you know it's like sort of a a message to the prophets of the orcish gods going a king will rise again but one of our choosing i'm not wording this very well I mean, it could just be the change. fact that if you if the um they basically a fourth player enters the game where they have extended the um they have extended the fact that if you want to make to have your own secular empire you can uh you have to you have to you have to um, fix the finish the crown. Hey, we can make that work. I need to write this up so we can push on. Oh. Aaron? Writing it up right now. Okay, so in the current age, the um Gnomish god of nature, natural things, and trickery, Igam Igam, has stolen one item, the item least noticeable, from each of the gods of the world, and hidden them across the world, and then told all the humans about it. Sorry, all the, yes, all the humans everywhere. No one else, just the humans. Why? Racist bastard. He wanted to. <laughs> that racist, he it would be thieving, like devil. Because he thought it would be funnier that way. Um, Look, if he tells the gnomes, they just somehow find a way around his making the gods not realize these things are stolen. It's almost like the gnomes are conscientious and don't want their gods being stolen from. Funny, though. Well, it's not just the gnomes' gods. I, it's everybody's. Kobold gods, orc gods, gods everybody. Yep. Oh, yep. The orcs are going to love that. They don't know it's gone. It's the item yes. that has been touched the least by whichever deity, but is also still powerful. So, you know, stuff like, um, stuff like, uh, Bolokum's magic Naginata that is you enchanted to, that is, uh, powered <laughs> to always be able to, uh, keep the fire burning, the food warm, and absolutely slaughter anyone who tries to break into your house. His Naginata that he picked up that one time at a con. He, she picked up that one time at a con. Goddess of Hearth and Home. All right. I have no idea what I want to call this, but yes. Um, yeah, the, the items have been stolen from the, god, from the gods. The gods don't realize that the item is missing because it never gets used. But um, in the hands of mortals, it will grant them great power. Oh, and yeah, uh, and, oh yeah, the humans know they're missing. And, well, they know that powerful artifacts have sca been scattered across the world anyways and are looking for them. They don't know the exact details, but... Okay. It's got. Alright, so the final thing for rumors and portents, right? Yep. Um, okay, current age again. And I'm going to make a light event. And... So after... After many decades, okay, what's um, what's uh, I'm trying to think of a good city pun, but I'm gonna write this in and put the dead thing in later. After decades of mourning, the first city, at, um, has re. Uh, I'm trying to say the first city is looking is uh is is ready to love again is uh looking for a new paramour. Just like that, maybe. Yeah. New paramour. Time, time of more over. Yeah. Somebody's city's gonna get sent to horny corny jail, isn't it? Almost mm. certainly. <laughs> I mean, she is a bit of a Kruger. Cougar. 
Thank you for that image of a cougar sleeping in a tree. <laughs> All right. While you're typing that up. Mm -hmm. Funny thing is, I know a cougar who has a tree house. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to believe that that's actually a thing. Yeah, an actual cat as opposed to a person. Well, you can believe what you want to, even if it's wrong. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very nice treehouse. And that's all I'm going to say about it. Right. So, that's a good chunk of stuff. We've had three rounds each. Yep. Um, do we want to roll up characters next week? Or in between uh -huh. weeks? I think... <laughs> I only speak for myself here. I am very behind on actually writing races and stuff, so I would rather not try and do it between weeks. If right. you want to have I, haven't even I am yet. pretty good um, at getting race template, race categories built up. How about I have... we... Mm -hmm. Well, I character have, building uh... is pretty quick. And what was... Random yeah, stat line, so... I was thinking that we could just go and do a final pass of the races we do. Like, we can uh, basically have a sit down and we just turn out classes and races and classes and so forth. Just do the final pass of the yeah. um, like just in the basically getting all the math right. Yeah, so we can like we can standardize the uh spreadsheet and everything. Yeah, we can decide over the weekend. Anyway. I need to head off anyway. That's uh, fair. So, yes, 